hello, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Sunday, it is that time of the week when I try and do some work, try, try, do some work, uh, and you guys hang with me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it is Sunday, the something of whatever month it is, I've got no idea. Uh, uh, my brain's not working, hang on, I need coffee straight away, wow. There we go, welcome, welcome. Now before we get going, please do take note of the little pin post at the top of the chat. Very specific reason that I don't want you to discuss what's mentioned in that pinned post because YouTube can demonetize my video and this is my income and my living. So please do not discuss the blessings of Nurgle we are currently putting up with. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, yes, I hate I hate restricting people's free chatter, but I also need to make a living. Please do not discuss such matters. Anyway, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Warhammer Sunday. Uh, that time of the week when I try and do some work and you guys hang out with me. Uh, now a bit of a break from the usual technique, usual routine this week. We're still doing a bit of conquest, but I'm breaking away to get my Silver Templars built. If you remember, I'm a premium subscriber to the Warhammer Conquest part work. And as such, uh, I opted in and got the Silver Templars little how to paint guide extra thing where you get a whole squadron of Silver Templars and a load of paints and everything else. Now, of course, they're just bog standard Space Marines. They're not, they're not anything special that you can't just go out and buy the individual models. Um, but... Technically, the Silver Templars launched with the Warhammer Conquest. They announced them, they released, they sort of revealed them. Uh, and this is the first. This is a, a, as far as I know, this is unique to Warhammer Conquest, this guide. But I'm not going to follow this guide. Uh, the reason I'm building these today is because this week coming up, uh, I'm going to be doing a How to Paint Silver Templars video. I think I've got a plan for them. And if the plan works, then I will do uh, a Silver Templars painting, guys. I've got to build a spare Space Marine to do as a test to make sure the cunning plan works. But yes, welcome, welcome. If you've not seen one of these streams before, let's get all the usual preamble out of the way. Uh, I say I will sit here for three hours and kind of waffle on to myself and hang out with you guys in chat. This is just a chance for you guys to have fun in the chat and meet your friends in chat with me in the background waffling away as wallpaper while you're t t typing to your friends and playing Skyrim or something in the background, as I'm sure Paul will be. Uh, just a chance for you to hang out. So do join in the chat. If you're watching this, you may notice the chat's not here today. That relates to the whole not talking about the blessings of Nurgle thing. I can't afford to not <laughs> monetization, so I don't want to take any risks. <clears throat> so it's just not there temporarily. Uh, but if you want to join in, there is a live chat. You can't see it, but I will be responding to people in chat all throughout the stream. If you want to join in and have a good time, do make sure to click the YouTube, YouTube icon that's down here somewhere in the bottom corner of the video viewer, whatever you're watching this on. Uh, it will take you to the YouTube page where you can join in the live chat and do the type. Uh, if you are in chat, then feel free to... I've got the iPad here in front of me. You can see it. If you want to get my attention, then all you need to do is put your comment in big fat capital letters because I'll depend on you guys to give me stuff to talk about. Put it in big fat capital letters. Uh, or if you want to, you can use the super chat, which is the dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That will put your chat comment in a big colour box and it'll put an animation up here somewhere. And if, that'll also help support this channel a bit. It's a little way I make money off those things. So do feel free. Uh, but yeah, that's how you can get hold of me. So do join in the chat if you want. If you're a lurker uh, and you're watching this on a mobile device, the chat might be under the video player. So just scroll down a bit. It might be under there if you want to join. I do recommend it. Quick shout outs to all the people that make this stream possible. Of course, get this out of the way first. First and foremost, to my wonderful, wonderful, lovely, lovely Patreon supporters. Uh, you can support this channel on patreon.com forward slash model making guru. The link is there. Uh, if you want to directly support me, this is what I'm living. And I depend on my patrons as my as my majority source of income. So massive thanks to those people, those lovely people who make this entire channel and this stuff I do possible. So massive thank you to them. Of course, I'm also an affiliate of Goblin Gaming, your one-stop shop for all your model making, tabletop gaming model making. Hang on, more coffee. Words. Words aren't working. All your tabletop ma model making. Three, two. All your tabletop gaming needs including model making there you go goblin gaming um if you want to get some really really sweet deals 20 percent off a games workshop malifaux conflict 47 and massive savings on everything else including the new skyrim tabletop game go to goblin gaming don't just go to the website use the link that's in the description below this video use that specific link because that's my affiliate link and that tells them i sent you and i make a little bit of income off that it doesn't cost you any more but it tells them i sent you so make sure please to use the link in the description below the video and of course i'm also sponsored directly by emodels.co.uk your one stop shop for your traditional model making needs again link in the description below the video so massive thanks to those three channels that help keep this whole thing afloat Ooh. 
we have a thing. We have uh, Dad super chatted. ELO, whoop, whoop. I knew Dad would like ELO. Thank you very much, Dad. That's what a super chat looks like. You can see it there on screen. There's a blue thing. That's how I can't miss your comment if you do a super chat. Massive thanks to Dad. Uh, like I say, don't forget the super chat helps support me. It's a way of supporting me. Now, one last thing before we get going. We're still doing the stream boss battle. George is still your stream boss. Now, if you notice in the news, I've just, in my update, said I've just finished George's Cesarbi. So that will eventually be going over to him. So George is a really happy bunny at the minute. So what you need to do to make him even more happy and cheerful right now, given that I've just finished his Cesarbi for him, is to boot him off being stream boss. Yeah, you, do. you need to usurp his throne. Now, if you don't know what stream boss is, Stream boss battle, when it says on my title card, win 200 quids worth or plus of kits, this is the stream boss battle. It's a way for you guys to build a big fat pot of community money just for yourselves. I don't make any money on this. You guys build up a pot of community money by doing tips to the tip jar. Whoever gets Tim to zero will become the new stream boss and will win all the money in the tip jar. Now, every time you put a tip through, and the address is here, streamlabs.com forward slash model making group. Every time you put a tip through, you take off some of George's health. You can see the health bar, the little black bit at the end because you've taken off a little bit of his health. Every tip takes some of his health off. The more you tip, the more his health comes off. If your tip gets him to zero, you will win all the money collected in that pot. I make nothing on this. When George became stream boss, uh, he, he won a pot of about £488 to spend at Goblin Gaming, uh, a Games Workshop or Forge World. If you're in the EU or the UK, you can use Goblin Gaming, but you've also got Games Workshop and Forge World. You can order whatever you want, but you win all the money in that pot to spend. I basically order it for you. Tell you what the budget is and order it for you. So do get doing the stream boss battle. It's worth it. George is in a really good mood right now because, like I say, I finished his Cesarbi. So surely you want to get him out of the good mood and usurp his throne. Yes. <laughs> I know at least one person that would love to boot him off the throne right now, but there's nothing in it for them. Right, we'll have a quick look at chat. Dad has, of course, already asked the most important question of the day, which is a bench and belly. What's on your bench? And what's in your belly? Uh, what are you working on? Doesn't need to be a model. Can be anything creative. Can be a drawing or a painting or an embroidery. Or you could be, I don't know, glass blowing. But you don't tend to do that in your bedroom or your workshop or your, you know, garage or whatever. Could be anything creative. And what's in your belly? What are you having for dinner? Or what have you had for dinner? Uh, something just happened. Somebody just subscribed and it hasn't told me. I shall just take my, my find out. Not going to tell me who that was because it went off the screen. Whoever that was that just became that just subscribed, thank you very much. Your name came off the screen before I had a chance to see you. I apologise. It's not telling me. It's not updating. Anyway, yes, welcome. Uh, I've tweaked as always. I've tweaked the uh, audio and stuff today. So do let me know if the audio is okay. If I'm too loud or too quiet. Hopefully everything's all right. Uh, I have the same settings every week, but some weeks it's really quiet and some weeks it's really loud. I don't know why it changes. I don't physically change anything. So it's a nightmare. Doing a live stream is a nightmare, technically. Right, let's have a quick look at chat anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, more Draco says, Grandfather Nurgle, blessings be all this morning, afternoon or evening, where you might be. Redons the plague mask, he says, because he's got a cold, apparently. Uh, nothing to do with that, which shall not be discussed. Uh, greetings model, that's uh, Mordraka, Candy Graham, greetings model making guru, Pascal Mordraka. Now Pascal was the first in, of course, he's not on my chat, but he was the first at like two seconds after I'm being texted, hang on. Uh, okay, the subscriber was Tremere34, thank you very much Tremere34 for becoming a subscriber. How did, nice, oh yeah, I, I, by the time I look round and see who it was that subscribed, it goes off the screen, but I have a list of all the actions that happened, but sometimes it doesn't update, so, yes. Uh, yes, Pascal was the first in, like, literally minutes before I set the stream up. Uh, we have uh, Dad, of course. Dad and Paul at Team Inept are two of your lovely, fluffy mods. Uh, they are lovely, lovely, lovely folks. They'll keep you safe. They'll keep you protected in chat. If anybody gets any leery in chat, they'll kick them out. They'll protect all the lovely people that are our regulars. However, if you do cross them, they will set you alight, throw you into a big massive pit full of flammable liquid then they'll light the flammable liquid they'll then dig out that pit while it's burning in a massive dump truck and they'll put it in the dump truck which will be on fire take it to an even bigger burning pit dump you in that dig that out and then dump that into a volcano so don't cross them is what i'm saying i don't know where i was going with that that just got really weird uh yes they they, they won't don't cross them they'll be fine they are on a special alert today for the issues that we mentioned earlier they've been the pinned post at the top of the chat so if you do put a comment in like that and it gets killed off straight away don't be offended i'm just trying to protect my income here 
Uh, right, let's have a look. So yeah, Dad and Paul are your mods. Welcome to those two. CD, I'm just here to win some kits, morning all. Welcome, CD. Get putting your tips in the tip jar. Uh, it always goes a bit slowly at the start because everybody puts in little tips and it slowly goes down. When it gets to about here, the health gets to about here on the on the health bar. This is George's health bar. When it gets to about there and all this is black, that's when it starts getting the big tips coming in. And then somebody dumps in like a couple of hundred quid and it goes ping and they've won several hundred pounds worth of stuff. So yes. Uh, now I do change the amount it does, so it, that's why I always say it's between normally two to five hundred quid. It could be more, could be less. Uh, Nim is in. Morning everyone, says Nim. Welcome Nim. Eric Graham, morning all. Welcome Graham. Beyond Hope, uh, we have Andy McLeish, so welcome to Andy and Beyond Hope. Lewis Williamson, welcome Lewis. Uh, Eric Graham, I think I said Eric Graham, but I've said him twice now. Lewis and Eric. Jamie Bone is in. Welcome, Jamie. Good to see you, dude. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What else do we have? Uh, Lewis says, Fox, my wife has just said that she's surprised with your choice of intro music, you know, the 15 minute preamble. You thought you would be more into bowling for soup and punk rock type of music, to which I replied, I've got no idea what bowling for soup is. Uh, and I, I don't actually like songs like, you know, lyrics and so They just bore me. Because when I listen to music, I like to make up the story of head. If the lyrics tell me the story, I'm bored. Plus, I can't stand most singers anyway. You know, the only sing songs I'll listen to are ELO. Cause I could... uh, but yeah, the, the music at the start of the video, the 15-minute stuff, it's just generic, chill music. It's not my kind of music either. I don't actually listen to that stuff normally. Uh, but yeah, it's just generic, chill music. But it's better than songs. Because if you put in like specific songs and stuff, A, there's always copyright. But B, not everybody likes the same stuff. So if I just do generic, bland, wallpaper, chill music, nobody's going to be... Uh, no, no, no. My cats like the music, says Sergeant Bones. Welcome, Sergeant. Uh, ba -da -ba More cowbell, says Sarge. Have anybody else new come in? Paul DiTomaso is in. Welcome, Paul. Hey, buddy. How's life at the factory? Paul says, my brain's not working. We know no change. Yes, my brain never works, but sometimes it works better than other days. Osric 9000 is in. Hello all. Welcome, Osric. Uh, Dad asked the question. Bench and Belly. Chris uh, is in as well. Chris at Gross Models. He's another one of your mods. Uh, he says he's actually playing uh, The Division, not Skyrim. I don't know why, because Division's rubbish and Skyrim's brilliant. Uh, Team Inep says, praise be Akatosh and all the divines. Yes. Praise be Akatosh and all the divines. Kajit has carrots, if you need carrots. Yes, I didn't do a stream yesterday. I didn't do a Skyrim stream. If you're wondering what that is, I do a Skyrim stream on Saturdays. I've just started. I didn't do one yesterday because I was busy finishing up the Sazabi. Uh, let's have a look. So, which one was that one? Uh, somebody just chatted something. Seducer has super chatted two pounds. First time catching a stream, have two pounds. Thank you very much, Seducer. I see what you did there with the name Seducer. I like that. Thank you very much. That's very, very kind of you. You are a truly an awesome person. Uh... We're talking about, yes, I was doing a Skyrim stream yesterday and I didn't do one yesterday because I was finishing up on the Cesarbi and getting that filmed and stuff. There was other, I had to do real life stuff like, you know, outside in the outside world. I'll be back on Saturday. But it means that Paul didn't get to shout at me for three hours because he likes to shout at me when playing Skyrim and, nobody, and he, he missed out on my Khajiit voice. So there you go. Quano Man is in. Bench has extra home cooked LED lights for the Falcon and the belly is getting some of that spaghetti bolognese. Yes. Oh, I forgot to. I've just read that out. Anyway, I just realised. Yes, you can swear all you want in chat. By the way, I don't care. I'm not going to read it out. Apart from when I just did then. I'm not going to read out swears because I'm monetized. But you can swear all you like in chat. I don't care. Uh, that was in reply to the uh, bench and belly. Do 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 do. Beyond Hope says, as some of the rare items are only on Forge World or Games Workshop to order, can you split the stream battle cash with multiple vendors for the stream boss battle? Yes, you can spend the stream boss money however you want. The only restrictions are it has to be Forge World, Games Workshop, or if you're in the UK or EU, uh, Goblin Gaming. You can you can divvy it up between all three. The reason I specifically go for those two is um, Goblin Gaming are obviously affiliates of mine anyway, so I'm going to funnel things their way. But with Games Workshop and Forge World, Basically, wherever you are in the world, if, if you live in, say, Brazil, uh, and I order something from uh, wherever, let's say you wanted to order something when it wasn't from uh, Forge World or Goblin Gaming, you'd have to pay import charges, you'd have to pay shipping, and that's coming out of your winnings if you win the stream boss battle. If you do it through Games Workshop or Forge World, 
you don't get charged shipping over a certain amount, and obviously they have stores in most countries. Uh, Seducer super chatted another two pounds. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Yeah, so if, if you're in, say, Brazil and you choose a load of stuff from Games Workshop or Forge World, I order it for you in the UK, and it comes from your nearest game. It goes to, well, it can be delivered to your local Games Workshop store or directly to you, but it goes through Games Workshop's network. You don't get charges, you, uh, shipping charges, and you don't get import duties. Uh, as long as, I think it's like 140 quid at Games Workshop and or something like that for Forge World. If you spend that much, you get free shipping. So it basically means by using those stores, Forge World and Games Workshop, all the money you win can be spent on stuff, not shipping charges, import duties. Because, for example, if I order something that costs me £200 from, let's say, America or Japan, I'll probably pay anywhere from 50 to £100 import duty because it comes into the cost. I'm importing it from a different country. So uh, the reason I say Games Workshop or Forge World is because that saves you all that money spent on nonsense where you can spend it on the goods. I just or place the order, you get it all free of charge. And Goblin Gaming, like I say, if you're in the EU or UK, it, they're my mates. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you their way. Uh, but yes, you can split it. You can get some from Forge World and some from Games Workshop. It's up to you. Yeah. Space Hamster, welcome Space Hamster, says I'm shoveling spaghetti carbonara into my face hole right now. I wish I was starving right now. But probably nothing on the bench today. My school has shifted everything to online, so I'm wicked busy getting that resi. Are you in Boston? Wicked busy. I'm wicked awesome. Park the car in a garage. I can't do a Boston accent. Uh, I just know that Wicked Awesome is kind of Boston. So. Uh, yeah, so he's wicked busy getting that ready. Spaghetti carbonara. Ooh. Uh, let's have a look. Nim Cinderian says, Bench Shin Musha paint job on hold for Dungeons and Dragons and Bellies, Arby's roast beef sandwich and bacon cheese curly fries. Ooh. We don't have Arby's in this country, but I'd like to check them out. Uh, Seducer. I like that name. There's Bench, Adeptus Custodies, Guard Squad, and Sisters of Silence, Witch Seekers, and Belly Beer. Excellent. Good choices. Good choices all around there, I think, Seducer. Uh, welcome to the stream, by the way. Uh, Paul at Team Inept is working on a, uh, a, a Najal. Najal? Najal. Njal. Najal. Njal. I don't know what that means. Njal Stormcaller with custom base. Probably should know what that is, but I'm not a big Sigmar type. I don't know what that person. I don't. Cynical Steve benches the sad device tank Mark 1. I think he means dad device. Dad made him one of these. You don't know about this. Steve likes to scratch build things. Dad made him one of his patented dad devices. Which this is a... Uh, this is a... Somebody's just done a thing. Bigger, bigger. Oh, let's have a look. Face Hamster says, uh, Might as well give my money away if the world is ending. Five pounds into the tip jar. He's just taken some of George's health off. You'll see it there. That's how it works, folks. The tip jar slowly builds up. I don't make any money off that. I don't see that money. Anyway, thank you very much, Space Hamster. Yes, Dad made uh, made him one of these. It's a thing for for various things, but the best thing it's a, is the thing it's best for shades. It is a patented, not patented, Dad anti spillage device. I love this. It's the most used tool I've got. And he got one of these, but because Steve likes to custom build things, he stuck jets on it and a nose cone and tracks and things it's like a little vehicle. It looked very orky. So awesome work by by Steve there. So I think he means the dad device tank, not the sad device. Edward Leonard says, Belly's going to be roast beef and mashed potatoes with mushroom gravy. Oh. Paul says, Belly, I think it's chicken in some form. Uh, ba -do -ba -do. Look. Cynical Steve says, sorry, dad device, not sad. Although I suppose that is subjective. Uh, Stephen Werner is in. Welcome, Stephen. Seducer, I like Team Inept. Everybody likes Team Inept. Oh, it jumped. Hang on, let me find it. Bonoman says, Bench has extra home-cooked LED. Oh, we've done that one already. My apologies. Cynical Steve says, if I had the money to dethrone George, I would probably just go and buy X amounts of kits instead of faffing about lol. Yeah, the idea is you don't like put 400 quid in and win 400 quid with the stuff because that's not winning anything. The idea is you put some money in, but you win twice as much or three times as much, you know. In an ideal situation, you'd put a fiver in and be the last person to get him to zero, and therefore you'd win 500 quid of stuff for a fiver. That's the idea. It's all practical. Uh, there is a chance I can't spell spag ball, says Quano Man. Carolina Roberto is in. Hello, Carolina. Welcome, welcome. You're getting earlier in your joining the streams. I like this. You used to come in right at the end. Now you're coming in. Excellent. 
Uh, Paul says everything's fine at the candy factory. Box is out of carrots. No carrots for Khajiit. Khajiit has many carrots. I received them last week. It was most impressive. Quantum Man, for some reason, goes all Klingon and says, Kapla! I don't quite know what I win. My first payment didn't go through, says Sir Juicer. Oh, okay. Not to worry. I got a notification, but it's all possible. Anyway. But thank you anyway. Thank you for, for doing it. Eric Graham says, Belly, chocolate chip waffles, coffee, bench, custom painting, couple of HO scale, 50 foot box cars. Eric likes his railroading. Lewis Williamson, belly, roast pork and all the trimmings chosen by the kids again. They like Peppa Pig, bench, 148th hobby boss at Tomcat. Awesome. Uh, Space Hamster, I think it's park the car in the car park. Yeah, if you're, if you're Boston. Uh, everybody, anybody watching lives in Boston now is just screaming and pulling the hair out. Park the car in the car park. I can't... It, Trying to channel my inner Kennedy. It doesn't work. Paul at Team Inept likes Boston. Boston. Never been to Boston. So Space Hamster is not in Boston. Okay. He's a space wolf, you Philistine, says Paul at Team Inept. Bans Fox. <laughs> Paul's banning me in, from my own stream because I didn't recognise the name of a space puppy. Uh, fuck. I think we're up to date with stuff there. Uh, we have Shoki Reviews is in. Welcome, Shoki. You've not been in one of my streams before, I don't think. And Totally Scale Models is in. Welcome, Totally Scale Models. Welcome to both of you. I think I'm up to date. I've got a really itchy nose. And you may notice today I'm a little bit sniffly, but don't start panicking. It's just sniffles. It's nothing, nothing serious. Uh, I've got a bit of a light cold, let's say. I'm a little bit more sniffly than normal today, so I do apologise. Right, let's get some work done. We are today working on the uh, Silver Templar set that came with the Conquest artwork. Like I said, my plan is this week... How handy is that? It's like a little handy. How to build things, guys. But my plan is this week, like I say, I have a specific plan for painting these dudes. And I'll film a how to paint guide. Uh, now, I don't have a specific plan, and I don't know if it will work. I've got a cunning plan lined up. So what I'm going to do is get these guys built today. I will build an extra space. I've got spare space marines lying around. I'll build an extra space marine. I'm just wiping my nose again. Uh, I will <clears throat> get an extra one built, and then I'm going to do a test on the spare one. Because, like I said, the specific thing I've got in mind, I don't know if it will work or be practical. So... When you find out, when you actually get to watch this build series, it'll either be, here's how to paint them in the normal way, or here's a different way to do it that might be quite interesting. Yeah. Today, I just need to get these puppies built. I was going to get them all built yesterday, but like I said, I was finishing up George's Sadabi. There you go. Right. My first Warhammer stream, I need to start my Master Grade Jester, so Shoki review. Yes, you should start your Jester. Jesters are cool. Now, I've already built the, uh, who's this guy? Uh, this guy is, I can't find it. Now. Lieutenant Eskad, Eskadon. Lieutenant Eskadon is this guy. He's wavy swordy guys. I built him last week, Thursday. I was in Chris's stream and this is being awkward. Hang on, I'm bagging. Stand up. Every, oh, everything's falling over. Oh, Guthorm. I don't know. Everything's just falling over. Right, so we built Lieutenant Eskadon. You also get, uh, I think, five Marines and a Sergeant, or you get four Marines and a Sergeant. You're basically getting a small squad with this pack. So, as usual, the instructions are a bit vague and weird. This kit is, it says in here, it says, With the Lieutenant assembled and ready for war, you can now move on to Squad of Intercessors. This kit is quite complex, so you will need to follow the guide very closely. The bodies and legs are designed to be assembled in a specific way, so make sure you have the matching bodies and legs before assembling the tube. You need to see the finished models to get an idea of how they should look, turn to the last page, blah blah blah. Okay, right, so there we go. Lieutenant Escargo says, Ooh, I like Escargo. Snails are nice. I've had snails. Now. Garlic. Snails and garlic. Oh, very pleasant. <clears throat> right, so. <clears throat> we have, uh, first of all, Number one, we need nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Let's get snipping. Now these gates are still fairly chonky, so I'm not going to use my nice base helmet. I'm not going to use my lovely, lovely 
uh, god hands just yet. And do let me know if my helmet of seeing gets in the way. Because I need it because I'm an old man. So do let me know. So I need 9, 10, 11 and 12. And I have approximately a billion parts. 9, 10, 11 and 12. Right, there's 10. So hopefully, how are you all? I hope you're all well. Avoiding the blessings of Nurgle. I'm trying to think what's been going on. Need number nine. What's been going on in the world? Well, uh, like I said earlier, I have now finished George's uh, Sazabi, Borderlands style. Uh, Sazabi, Shanghai Dragon Sazabi. 12. Which is now done. Uh, and if you're not familiar with it, it was basically George is one of my patrons. He's a wonderful, wonderful patron. 12, where's 12? Uh, and he, George uh, was one of my top tier patrons. And at the time, I had a reward scheme whereby my top tier patrons would get a master grade build of their choice, free of charge. I'd just basically build it and send it to them free of charge, gratis, for being a wonderful patron after 12 months. And the plan was we were going to build a Sazabi in the style of a Diva's Mech from Overwatch. However, that morphed a bit later on and it became, let's not make it specifically Diva's Mech, but let's just make it a Shanghai, because he likes Shanghai Dragons, a Shanghai Dragons Mech. And I suggested painting it in a Borderlands kind of comic book style. It's not cell shading, but it's kind of a comic book style. I like that. So that's what we did. So it's basically meant to be... An Overwatch universe type diva type mech in the Overwatch universe, but painted in the Borderlands style. Uh, did, you may notice I changed the title on YouTube, by the way, just to clarify that, because somebody did ask, they were saying it's a bit weird, the, the figure's totally not in scale with the mobile suit. And I had to explain it's not actually meant to be a mobile suit, it's meant to be like a 20 foot tall mech, 20 meter mobile suit. But it probably wasn't clear because it did seem a bit weird just having a Sazabi with a, a really like a really tall bloke next stood next to it, which didn't make any sense. Meant to be like a twenty foot tall mech in a kind of hodgepodge of Borderlands and Overwatch. That's why it's called the Border Watch. Uh, Sazabi. Right, so have a quick look at chat because ask people how they were. Stop talking about food, says Andy McLeish, about making me hungry. So need to eat. Eat all the foods. Kajit has foods if you have coin. <laughs> yes. Uh, and if Glee says, do it as well as can be considering, well, the outsides. And Shoki Review says, doing well so far, except for pollen season. Oh dear, really? Uh, lol, food, glorious food, cold cabbage and mustard, says Andy McLeish. Oh yeah, cabbage. I like cabbage. The Sazabi was awesome. Thank you very much, Shoki. Where are you, Shoki, says Dad. And Shoki says, Texas. John Kenwood is in. Good afternoon. Thank you. Welcome, John. Uh, somebody questions about me having a plan for the Silver Templars, and Beyond Hope says his plan is the same as his work. Four letter words that sound good. Not sure he knows the exact meaning of them. I'll do, I'll do extra work to read out the comments today, because, of course, like I say, you haven't got the chat here to look at, so I will read your comments out properly if I can. And the McLeish says, shiny silver marine. My first space marine, part one. My space marine. Uh, Paul at Timonet says something probably rude. I'm not going to read it out. Uh, and the McLeish says, Sazabi bibi bibi bibi. Sazabi bibi. Sazabi bibi. Sazabi bibi bibi. Sometimes I trip up and I can't help but say Sazabi bibi. Says the Sazabi is sweet. Uh, stunning says Candygram, thank you very much. Have to agree, George is getting a masterpiece, says Cynical Steve. Yes, he is. I just want to see a mobile claptrap. <laughs> That'd be good. I'm one of those few people that thought claptrap was awesome. I really did. I have to say, by the way, just going off on a complete tangent. Have any of you guys played far into Borderlands 3? I got it when it came out. I was, yeah, more Borderlands, yeah, woo! And then I kind of played through a bit. But it didn't it didn't grab me massively. I don't know. I got off world and I got to the next place and stuff, but I don't know because I I love Borderlands. I liked a lot Borderlands Two. Borderlands the pre sequel bored me senseless. I hated it. 
I was I was really nervous about Borderlands 3 and it started off okay but I don't know it just it didn't massively I must go back to it but it didn't massively grab me I think because I was hanging around on the first world and that first world is a bit of a grind fest and take very far so the, again it's it's like the problem that Borderlands 2 had against Borderlands Borderlands was brilliant and I loved all the weapons but then Borderlands 2 had a different weapon sort of thing wasn't quite the same I wanted my you know caustic battle rifle and they just didn't have any oh I got used to it I must go back to Borderlands 3 but did anybody else just did, was, did you find it brilliant or did you just not get into it did it not grab you like Borderlands 1 or 2 John Kenwood stuck on COD Ghosts and Battlefront 2 yeah never had an interest in Call of Duty to be honest It was alright when it was. I like Call of Duty when it was World War Two, and you could play. It was actually had a single player campaign. Modern Warfare. It was alright. I played that for a while. Again, I didn't do that online because I have no desire to to play that kind of game online in competitive multiplayer. Um, but then after that, I just went off it and bored me. I kind of fell out of favour with. I've said it before. I fell out with of, of love with first person shooters. I think. Around about the time of sort of modern, the original Modern Warfare, I just got bored of them. And then I sort of found, you know, more interesting open worldy stuff like, um, the one here, uh, Fallout and Skyrim and similar. Oops, don't want to gouge that. Where's my file? Yeah, so not. Into, and I, I have no desire at all to get involved in I have no no love at all for online multiplayer just absolute toxic wasteland no interest in that at all I used to play Halo LAN for many many years uh, original Halo Combat Evolved you know take your Xbox around to your mate's house get some beers and some pizza it was great fun then it went online with Halo 2 and it was alright first it was fun then Halo 3 played that for a little while but it became just such a toxic wasteland that I'm like, you know what? And I tried. I used to play Call of Duty 2, I think it was. We used to play online a little bit. My favourite map on there, if I've got the right game, the favourite map was a, a little French village called Poisson, which was fantastic because there was a there was a dead cow in the middle of a road, and you could hide behind that and snipe the enemy base. And I enjoyed that. But again, it was it was the the kind of people you ended up playing against were just morons. Mouth breathing, misogynistic, racist, morons. And I got sick of that, so I stopped playing online. Um, uh, you know, co op, uh, competitive multiplayer and stuff. I just lost interest in it. Co op, I adore. Co op is great fun because you know who you're playing with. As long as you're not playing with randoms. The things like Destiny and stuff like that, yeah, it's brilliant. Play with my mates. Borderlands and things, fantastic. Online multiplayer, nah. <laughs> I don't think so. Not for me. Uh, let's have a look. What's the chat doing? Extinction mode versus aliens for ghosts. John Kenwood. Eon's car is in. Hello, all, says Eon's car. I'm not saying that everybody that plays like things like Cub, just to make this clear, you know, I'm not saying people that play Call of Duty are all, you know, like that, but I'm saying there's too much of it that put me off. The multiplayer side, it's any any multiplayer game, not just Call of Duty. And the Call of Duty single player campaign, it just kind of went off that kind of strict, structured first person campaign, I think. Call of Duty was the thing at the time, and any, any kind of first person game, I just went off. I don't really do them anymore. Not really my bag anymore, sadly. Used to be. Uh, Command and Conquer remastered due in June. Ooh, never, never played Command and Conquer. I know it's an RTS. The only RTS I ever played was a, a, a dalliance with um, the first Halo, whatever it was, the Halo one, the RTS. Oh, whatever that one was called. Played that for a little while. That was quite uh, jolly. Uh, I stopped playing online multiplayer years ago, unless it's with people I know. It's a seducer. Like Borderlands 3 first, like, first I like it, I got very bored, it's permanent grind, says Stephen Warner. Yeah, that's what I was kind of finding. 
in the original Borderlands, I, I, I've managed to, you know, lock into a specific kind of weapon that I really liked. I liked the combat rifles, I liked the sniper rifles, and I liked, you know, looking for better combat rifles. And that, that was interesting to me, but I hate, uh, Borderlands 2 kind of faded away from that a bit. But it was still there a bit. But Borderlands 3, I don't know, it just didn't. It was more kind of just saying you just you just need to use every weapon and use what you find. I don't know. I'll go back to it and I'll try and dig back into it because it's the humour that I like. Halo Wars, that's it. Halo Wars, a shoki. Halo Wars, yeah, I tried that for a bit. It was quite good fun. John Cameron is the top hundred. I'll say that again. Top hundred player for Dawn of War for years. Cool. Uh, Eon's Castle says bench Hellbrute for my Death Guard and belly Applewood cheese sandwich and later grilled gammon with roast potatoes and Yorkshire's. Oh yeah, a bit of gravy. And you played Halo 3 on Xbox 360, says Eon's Carl. I think I would, when I was playing it, I was on Xbox 360. I've got the Master Chief collection now, but I did it much. Again, it's just, I, I just went off the first person shooter, the linear thing. I don't mean that the first person shooter as a con as a concept. Don't get me wrong. I like the idea of first person, but it's, I think it's the linear kind of campaign type stuff that went on. You know what I mean. Do 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 do. Uh, John Kenwood, steak pie in the oven, wood cladding on the bench. Wood cl explain this wood cladding to me, John. I don't know what you. Mean. What is the wood cladding? This sounds interesting. With cladding because cladding to me is like squishy but steak pie whoa steak pie hello hello the juicer says i recently got halo master chief collection i started playing it and liked it but i don't get much time to play well the beauty of that is you've got halo combat evolved it, assuming you're on a cons uh, on a console you've got halo combat evolved halo 2 halo 3 now you've got halo reach uh, I think you've got um, ODST, I think. I, I don't know if you've got Halo 4 in there. In fact, I mean, not that we talk about Halo 4 that much, but you've got a whole mess of games in there. If you don't get much time to play, but you enjoy the games, you've got a lot of, of playing there. You've got a lot of stuff. One good thing about it, it is really good. Value for money, because you get so much. And I do go back to Halo every now and then. I have the fondest of memories. It was Halo that got me into gaming big time. You know, I played games here and there before then, but I was never into gaming. When the original, original old man's memory Xbox came out with Halo, and it's like, wow, what is this? I need this in my life. I've been aware of it, and I was in, I was in my local town centre, walked past the local Dixon shop, and it was quite clever. They had this is when the original Xbox launched. They had the front, they had the front of the shop there. Okay, there's the front of the shop. There's the shop. Doorway here. They had right in the doorway. They had a TV on a on a on a stand with the the thing for Halo. They had a, an Xbox hooked up to it, and they had the attraction. They had the words out. They had an Xbox hooked into it, and they had Halo on attract mode on the TV. So you walk past and you see this like the the attract mode for Halo. Oh, and I was like, oh, I need this in my life, and I had to go home and. The very next day, I emptied my bank account. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was still young at the time. I hadn't been working that long. Well, I had been working for 10 years, but I didn't have a lot of money. I emptied my bank account. Went back to Dixon's the next day. It was either Dixon's or Curry's, a little tiny store. Went back the next day. I said, I want that in my life. Please give it to me now. And then, the ne and then that very next day, I went back to work and said, I need to book two weeks off. Just for the reasons, please. Book two weeks off. Then I had the best... <laughs> can't really explain it it's probably the best two weeks of gaming in my life because it was all new it was all fantastic uh i spent two weeks playing halo when i hadn't been really into games it was all new to me and i just playing halo eating pizza and drinking beer and it was great it was the best thing ever and you can't really go back because after that nothing really has that same feel those first few weeks that first few days when i would turn the xbox on and i'd hear the original xbox start up that I used to love that. And then the, the Halo chanting monks would kick in. 
I can't explain it in words. I can't explain it in words what it felt like. If you do it now, if you turn on the Xbox now and do the same thing, it's not the same. Because you've, you've been there and done that, so it doesn't feel the same. You don't get that buzz the first time. Right. Dad device with all my glues in the world. Can't explain it. So that, that got me into gaming big style. Years and go to my friend's house. We'd all play all play Halo. We'd have two Xboxes. And at the time, this is how this is how awesome it was. At the time, none of my friends had any interest in video games at all, apart from one. Uh, and she all she liked to play was Final Fantasy on the original PlayStation. That was it. Of, of all the me, me and my group of friends, that was the entire interest we had in video games. Uh, I played Quake and Quake 2 on PC like a little bit in the 90s. My friend had as well. But there was no real interest. Within about three weeks of me having an Xbox and introducing them to my Xbox and Halo, uh, all my friends had bought Xboxes. And they were all playing Halo. And none of them, well not all of them, most of them. And we were having little LAN parties. That's how, that's how powerful it was back in those days. Because that was just like, what? None of them had any any interest in them at all until I said, look, look at this game. Now let's have a little bit of a multiplayer game. Now look, how fun is this? And they'd be like, oh, I need to get me one of these things. That's how it started. Within within literally four or five weeks, they'd all gone out and bought an Xbox. We'd all started hanging out and playing uh, co -op, uh, multiplayer and co-op. My friend Nikki, who only ever whose entire gaming career was Final Fantasy of some sort on the original PlayStation and a bit of uh, Odd World. Was now, within about a month, has gone from not being able to even move a character around screen in a first-person way because she couldn't figure out the buttons to being the, the most badass of all as, as a sniper. Sniping us halfway across Blood Gulch with headshots. Awesome. Those were the days. Those were, in fact, indeed, the days. Can't go back to that. I remember, I remember, you know, all that time when I had my original OG Xbox. Well, I got an Xbox 360 in, what, 2006 or 7? Every time I bought a game, I'd compare it to Halo. I'd be like... Is this as good as Halo? No, it's nowhere near as good. So, yeah. Those were the days, man. Those were the days. Yeah, let's have a quick look at chat. Uh, hey, Fox. Hey, Dad. Says, Thy Creator. Welcome, Thy Creator. Uh, John Kenwood says, Repairing insulated wall until I do new floor and walls. Ah, okay. I didn't know if it was like a model making thing or actual proper DIY stuff. Damn it, you're going to go and make me play Halo now, said Chris at Gross Model. You should do. Fox, what material did you use for the base of the Tazabi diorama? I used styrofoam and the whole damn base disintegrated. Yeah, styrofoam can't take anything, basically, unless it's properly thickly climbed. Um, I was very lucky in that my very good friend Jerry um, gave me some thick... It's almost like... It's not quite plastic carb. It's like that thick. It's like... It's the kind of stuff that, like, for sale signs are made out of. It's like it's like foam core board, but not squishy in the middle. It's quite hard, and I I, I cut some of that to A4 size. It's basically two sheets of that A4 size glued together, and then in a picture frame. The, the base is a picture frame. Um, I don't know. You can some people use foam core board, but it's a bit a bit flexy flexy, and if it gets wet, it'll distort. Um, you can use just pieces of wood. I used to use just pieces of wood cut to A4 size. I tend to, handy tip, if you want a nice base, picture frames are a good cheap way. You can go and buy a cheap picture frame for a few quid. Uh, get rid of the glass, get rid of the card, keep the backer, the backing thing, uh, and put your diorama in there and put it in the frame, put the back on the frame. You've got a nice picture frame with a diorama in it. It's a dead cheap way of having a nice base that doesn't just have an open rough edge. Um, I've used wood. You can use wood. You can get really thick plastic card, but you probably want to get several sheets of it stuck together to make it thick and rigid, otherwise it'll bend and flop. Uh, but that's not exactly cheap. Um, 
you can probably from local art stores get thick plastic card type stuff and foam core board depends what you want to do i mean whatever you do if it's wood or foam core board you need to make sure you prime the crap out of it because when you start doing weathering and stuff on your base or putting um you know clays like water-based clays they're going to soak into any wood or cardboard especially wood got a thin wooden base don't just have bare wood and then put plaster or paper mache or clay or anything on it because the water will soak in and bend it so make sure it's all primed and keyed up but yeah you can use pretty much anything like i say just i, I tend to go for picture frames just because then everything's the same standard size and you've not just got a piece of wood with bare wood edges in it uh, uh, Team Inep says, did you use plastic cement on it? You need PVA or CA glue so it doesn't melt. Yeah, uh, that's for the polystyrene. Polystyrene foam will melt given, with no excuse at all. So you need to lock it and seal it with. A lot of people will seal it in watered down PVA. or do lots and lots of coats of PVA glue, which is just white glue or Elmer's glue. And that seals it. Uh, when I did my um, Imperial Skitter, which was a little vehicle, uh, with a landscape and some trees and stuff and there was all i used the oasis uh, you know the the foam you get to put plants in the green foam that you can pull apart it's all squishy the oasis foam that, that flower shops use florists i used that to sculpt the landscape it's dead good it's dead cheap and it's dead good fun you build it up but then before i started putting soil and texture and stuff on it i i brushed over it some thin down pva and i did coat after coat after coat and what it does is it, it soaks into it and it seals it. And it's just thinned PVA glue. And it basically seals it off, locks it. And then you can start putting down your earth or your your terrain and your, your grass and stuff like that. <coughs> a lot of people do that. So same thing. If you use if you use polystyrene foam, it's it's good dissolvable and everything. So you need to lock it away first. I might have poured resin into it, says they created. That'll do it. Resin is exothermic. When you when resin sets, it heats up. It will actually dissolve and melt. Uh, polystyrene producer my first multiplayer experience was the original doom on the pc and me and my friends crashed the college network yeah, i never played doom and quake uh, multiplayer i single player on my mum's pc in the in the front office in that we got like a little front bedroom that was mum's office which, with a crappy old 386 computer and some books and there uh, it was like the computer room and i used to when you know i used to go in my mum and dad had gone to bed or when they were no longer going to be using the front of the computer I used to go in and play Quake on an old 386. This is in the days before the internet where it was basically, we didn't have Wikipedia, we had Microsoft Encarta on disk. Yeah. When clip art was new and exciting. Uh, Nim says, the Bench and Belly Sunday Funday stream post has been created. Yes, if you are, I'm going to put it in chat for you. <clears throat> uh, if my buttons are still working, I assume, yes, there we go. If you're not already a member, I do have a Facebook group called the Model Makers Boom Hut go and join uh there is a post in there we somebody tends to set one up every sunday it's the bench and belly post we always ask you what's on your bench and what's in your belly but if you go into that into the facebook group find the bench and belly post <clears throat> you can actually put a picture up as well and if there's anything you're talking about in chat that you need to show a picture of that you can't do in chat just tell them to go and check out the bench and belly post and the little one-stop shop uh space hamster i've given up at using anything but a straight up piece of pla plate as a base for dioramas tried lots of other materials and something always went wrong yeah it's all about how you prepare it like i say wood is nice and solid <coughs> clear my throat one second wood is nice and solid but if it gets wet and moist with your washes and everything else it will expand and contract especially if it's uh, like laminated type wood so you need to make sure you're sealing it can use wood primers you can use just normal primers as long as you seal it before you put anything on it right where are we do 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 ba -dum -ba -dum. that's the thing in borderlands 3 is the best weapon you find every 10 minutes you find a new weapon that's better says Stephen werner yeah that was the thing in borderlands but borderlands borderlands 2 borderlands 1 you could still kind of st I still stuck to combat rifles and I'd find a better caustic combat rifle or a better electric combat rifle, whatever it was, a better elemental. But I'd still be able to stick with, but with like but for, uh, Borderlands 2, I was like, well, I love I love the rifles, but unfortunately most of them are pants and I have to go for pistols or snipers. And I'm like, I don't really want to. There's a lot of SMG work in Borderlands 2 that I got used to. I've done that, Eric Graham. I've done that so far. How you, Mark? Right, next one. That's number one. Uh, a, B... We need to mark these down, don't we? So which is which now? 
there's some kind of because it says you've got to do certain arms and certain legs Ooh, in different directions as well which is annoying uh, -do 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 -do. okay I don't think it matters which arms and things go on which torso as long as you've got the right arms and the right legs I think that's what it's basically saying so as long as I get the right legs on the right torsos bodies and legs yeah okay right, that's what it's I was thinking I might have to mark these down as this is one this one's two and then but no it's just the bodies and legs that you have to make sure it done correctly I put body one with legs one things like that that one got to do 13 and 14 for his other leg 13 and 14 get to the chopper 13 and 14 13 is there what else has been going on so i finished the sizabi that's done 14 the plan is then as i say assuming that my test silver templar will go well then this week i intend to get these guys painted up and i'll film that as a how to paint silver templars in an interesting and unusual way uh, then after that week after that assuming that all goes well the plan then is the week after i can then finally make a start on my perfect grave millennium falcon which will be an e-models build because it's about time I'd, i've been so long since i've done a build for them you know they are my sponsors and stuff i should really do that but i've been doing this as rb oh, it's basically taken so long because of real world stuff over the last <clears throat> six seven eight months real life stuff family and home and stuff it's just it's taken priority and i've not had as much time at the bench as i would like taken that long and other things as well um, i'm glad it's done it was fun I did enjoy it if you haven't seen it by the way i did post it up the other day again but if you haven't seen it if you want to do the borderlands paint style it, the way that I did it. If you want to, you know, get that for your own uh, fun, and I'm not saying it's the best way to do it, but I, I did kind of <clears throat> come up with a way to do it. Uh, and although the Patriot, the Sazabi build itself was is locked behind Patreon, it's a Patreon exclusive build. So a lot of the actual proper video build stuff is is patrons only. Um, I did put up a couple of videos showing how I built and painted the. Uh, Atalan Ridge Runner, which I made into a kind of bandit technical borderland style. <clears throat> That's available to everybody. It's on this channel. <clears throat> if you don't know how the playlists work, everything I do is in a playlist. So get yourself to my main YouTube front page, channel page. Click on playlists. Now it's a bit broken. You have to click on, I think, created playlists to see every single playlist. And there you'll see one for the for the Borderlands paint style Ridge Runner or Ridge Race, or whatever I called it. You can also, if you can't find that, you can just go to my website, modelmaking.guru or modelmakingguru.com. Uh, and there's a on my website, there's a YouTube tab at the top. Click on YouTube, it'll list all my build series easiest way to actually see all my stuff from one place because youtube's a bit weird sometimes when you click on when you go to someone's channel and it says look at their look at their playlists and you click on all and it gives you half of them and you're like well that's garbage so if in doubt just go to the website modelmaking.guru or modelmakingguru.com click on youtube and it'll show you there all the series all the series in the world that i've done but that shows you from start to finish how I did that kind of uh, that borderlands look because I, I tested out the whole paint job on that ridge runner first just to see if it worked before I did it in anger on George's expensive, uh, you know, Zabi. And the results were pretty good. So that's what I decided. So, yeah, if you want to know how to do it or one way to do it, it's quite good fun. The only thing you will need that's absolutely required uh, is ink for your outlining. Don't use black paint. If you want to do ink outline, if you want to do that kind of comic book style, not cell shaded style, it's not actually cell shaded. It's important to say that because cell shading is just black colours and outlines. Borderlands is a comic book style. It's it's ink and watercolour colouring. 
Borderlands style is more like a traditional comic book art where you draw it in pencil first, you do all the colour in watercolour, proper traditional, all your colours in watercolour so you get patchiness and overlaps, and then you ink it in. Uh, so it's more of a comic book or graphic novel style than cell shading. Cell shading is you know, light blue, dark blue, outline, that's it, done. It's cell shading be because it's the kind of colouring you would have on an animation cell. Whereas comic book art is the kind of the kind of thing you'd have comic book art in the days before they did it all on computer. Uh, uh, by the way, let me know if my head keeps coming into shot and getting in the way because I don't know. Yeah, if you want to know how to do that, just go and check it out. I say in my playlists or on my website in the YouTube section. It's all in there. There's about three episodes, and it doesn't show you how to build it. It just takes you through the paint job. Uh, I found that much as some people may deride them um the contrast paints actually work really well for reproducing borderlands metallic look what i mean by that is if you go if you play borderlands you'll realize there is no actual metallics in borderlands if something's supposed to be silver it's colored in grays there's no actual sh well probably a handful of them but for most things if it's something was like if they were painting that if that was in borderlands it wouldn't be metallic. It would be different shades of just black grey. Just normal grey and then with an outline. Again, it's comic book, it's watercolours. So uh yeah, this the, the contrast paints worked really well. Space Wolves grey and Griff Charger Grey worked really well for reproducing Borderlands metallics. Da, 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 da. Well, this dragon needs to get some sleep to fight the cold, so I'm calling it a night. Well, thanks for coming in, more Draca. Take care of yourself, buddy. Hope you feel better soon. So I've got a bit of a cold myself. You can tell by the sniffle. I'm a bit, a bit, a bit runny at the moment. You were, but it's just a cold. Well, thank you for coming in, Scale Model Muse. I think I'm here. I overslept. Coffee morning all. Welcome, Muse. Uh, Eric Graham is priming HS scale box cars. Apparently, I haven't missed much. John Kemmer just installed a new hardwired network for my consoles and my Millennium Falcon collection in the spare room. Awesome. I like that Millennium Falcon collection. When I start the Perfect Grade Falcon in a couple of weeks, week or two, it'll be my fourth, I think. Fourth Millennium Falcon. Not including the Diagostini one that I never finished. We don't count that. But it'll be my fourth Falcon. Now the challenge I'm going to have with that uh, is I'm not really sure how I'm going to weather it because it's a Bandai of course a lot of the things I would normally do to weather it aren't available to me because being Bandai plastic there's a risk that if you know thinners can damage the plastic quite easily if, if something goes a bit wrong so I've got to be really careful traditionally I would do things like on a Millennia Falcon uh, I would do things like I'll get my base colours down, and then the first thing I do before I start doing any oil paint dot filters or streaks, the first thing I would do is I would give it an all over wash of thinned Tamiya smoke. Tamiya smoke's like a like Tamiya version of Agrax Earthshade. It's just this smoky, transparent colour that if you thin it down massively, Tamiya thinners, you can put it on and it just gives this nice used look, gives some depth which is fine on a regular polystyrene kit. You basically, you get, a, what I, my recipe would be, one 10 milliliter pot of Tamiya X20A thinner, the acrylic thinner, one pot, you get one big fat brush, say, say, brush to show you now, let's say, this kind of size of brush, get a big blob of Tamiya smoke on the end of your brush, and you put that in the thinner, you do that twice, and that's probably thinned enough. That's probably about as thick as you want it. So it's two big brushfuls of Tamiya smoke in a 10 milliliter pot of Tamiya thinner. And that's it. That's your smoke wash. And all you do is you get your model and you get your brush and you go like that. And you just, you just, what do you do, Ted? Slap it on. Exactly. You just slap it on and then you just leave it for about an hour. But you have to watch it to make sure it doesn't pool up into, into like blobs. So you have to keep looking around it and get rid of any excess because it will pool up around you if you're doing a big falcon. It'll get into where the gravity pulls it down. And you'll get a blob of it, like a really dark patch. So you have to make sure to clean that up. But when you've done that, a couple of coats of that, you've got this lovely sort of depth. It's not quite as intense as Agrax Surshade. It doesn't discolor the surface quite as much. But it works wonderfully. 
but if I did that on a Bandai kit, basically it's a wash made of thinners and paint, you can pretty much guarantee my look, it would find every little bit of exposed plastic that I hadn't primed over would basically eat it alive. It would doubtless eat it alive. And what I'd find is every little bit where there was two pieces of, you know, two bits of plastic held together under tension, they'd have cracked. Before people start saying, oh no, it doesn't, it's not true, it's not true, I've had enough gumpler with cracked panels and bits and parts. I've had to deal with this enough time to build in gumpler. It does happen. Even if you're really careful and you prime everything, there's always a chance you'll miss something. So I can't do that. I've got to really kind of have a think about exactly how I'm going to uh, how I'm going to weather it. Now I probably will still do things like a dot filter, uh, oil paint dot filters, and oil paint streaking, because you can, although it does involve using thinners on the surface of the model, which is again a risk with Bandai plastic. Although it does involve using thinners, you can do it in such a way that you're using minimal thinners. You really, you're not splashing it everywhere. You've got to say a brick, you might have a brush dampened in thinners so it's moist. Moist. With the thinners. It takes ages to get to them. I can't do that. So, you, and you're running it over the surface. That's not so bad because that flashes off really quickly and it's not pooling in a corner. The damage occurs when you get a load of thinner and you've got like, you've got say a corner there between two bits. Let's say there's a corner here and that's these two bits are under pressure, two separate parts, and the thinner gets in works its way in and it pulls there and it can eat away at the plastic and then it goes crack and something breaks but that's the problem now it doesn't actually show on the instructions it shows gluing there's him 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 it's that one that one and that one and that one that's these five and it says glue this one to the but it doesn't say to glue the other ones to the base but I'm going to glue them to the base anyway, because of course I am. Not why it doesn't show the other ones not being glued to them, I don't know. I don't care. They're just space marines. Let's just get them done. I've, do, do, do. I've got one set aside. I've marked all these. Handy tip, if you're doing lots of bulk building like me, and like, for example, I've got all these dudes built before I paint them. Or the Warhammer Conquest. As I'm going through, I'm writing the issue numbers on the bottom of the bases, so that i basically got two... Um, skirmish cases full of minis and i don't know which ones relate to which issue just in case i need to know so on these i've marked them as st for silver templars and i've got one two uh I've got sergeant three two three four there you go. one two three four i don't know if i'll need that but it's just handy if i for some reason i need to know which is which so if it was this might have said right the arms that you just made need to go on this specific one and they, this is one we just built <clears throat> so we shall stick him on a da base base how low can you go and while that's gluing I have a quick look at the chat now as always you've seen me do it before i'll do it again i'm using two glues i know i say this every time but there's always a chance that somebody isn't is watching that wasn't before i'm using two glues uh tamir cement which is the thick stuff and tamir extra thin there's also tamir extra thin very fast setting which is a, like a lime green color which is that one. So don't worry if you've got that one and not this one. They're both the same. This one just dries even faster than this. This dries quite quickly, or sets, cures. This one is a bit faster. I've not used that yet. Uh, the same stuff. Uh, so this will weld the plastic together. Put two pieces of plastic like that. Traditional sticky glues will just sit between both pieces of plastic. And if you break the glue, you break the pieces apart. This is a welding cement. It will melt the two pieces of plastic together and they'll become one and you can't separate them. The glue will vanish. The plastic will now be two pieces welded together as one. It makes the strongest bond you're going to get with standard plastic polystyrene cement. This is thick and gloopy. And the reason I'm using two, see, uh, I want to be able to put him on the base and pick it up. If I use just the extra thin cement, I put it on the base, I put him in and it'll just come off. The regular cement is thick and gloopy and dad's going to tell me off because it's not in the thing. Thick and gloopy, which means put him on there like that to start with. I can splunge him onto the base here, give him a bit of a wiggle and a bit of a push down. Do that. Now the bond for the thick plastic isn't is not as strong as the bond for the extra thin, of course. 
but it's just got a little bit of surface tension stick to it. Mechanically, it's got a mechanical stick. It, 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 it's a gloopy liquid. So if I'm gluing something that's weight bearing, if I use the extra thin, it'll fall off. So I always use the fat glue first on arms and legs. You some use it on the legs. Just so it stays in place, what I can do now is come in with the extra thin, run that around the base of the feet. The extra thin, of course, is thin enough that capillary action, or as we like to call it, caterpillar action, will suck the glue under the plastic into all the little recesses. That will start doing its wonderful work, melting the plastic together. It'll also have the added side effect, a benefit, that if there's a splodge of glue from the thick glue that maybe have bubbled out, it will just melt that down and dissolve it a bit. If you do use thick glue to glue two things together and you get a bleb of glue, don't worry, get some extra thin and just run it over. It'll, it'll get rid of it. It'll dilute it. There we go. There's number one on the base. Done. Right. Swig of the coffee. I should move the coffee somewhere else, really. Put my lid on my glue. Now, obviously, those, those glues are fine for polystyrene-based uh, stuff. If you're using... If you're building Gumpler, for example, I know a lot of my viewers build Gumpler. If you're building Gumpler, no, those two glues may not work on some of the plastic parts. So do pay attention to what you're building. These are all polystyrene, so those two glues work. If you're building Gumpler, have a look at the instructions. If it says PS, it's polystyrene, you can use the two Tamiya glues. Other brands are available, of course. Um, this stuff is kind of very much similar to that stuff or Revell contactor glue, or Humbrol liquid poly that's in a squishy bottle, not in a bottle, not liquid poly, the, the thick glue, bay. they're kind of the same thing. Whereas there's nothing really like Tamir Extra Thin, apart from there's an ammo version of it, which is about the same, uh, and there is the uh, Plastic Magic. If you're building Gumplers, these will work fine on anything, on your instructions. If you look at the instruction sheet, it will say PS. On the, on the front where it's got all the different sprues, it'll say PS, which means polystyrene. It will work fine on them. But for parts that are ABS, like some of the inner frame parts on some Gumpler, these glues, those Tamiya glues, they won't work. There's no polystyrene or very little in ABS plastic, so it won't glue them. That's when you need something like this, plastic magic or specific ABS cement that will glue ABS plastic together. When I was working on the Cesabi, um, when I was building it, I built the elbows and the knees and the ankles locked in place. I, I set the pose and glued it in place to make painting easier. Um, and if I'd used Tamiya cements, it wouldn't have worked. I had to use this stuff to lock the, the joints in place so that now the arm is like that. The arm will always be like that. It'll sit in place, whatever, you know, whatever, like the hand is in a pose like that. <clears throat> All the joints are glued with this stuff. So it's locked in place now and it's never going to move. You can't move the joints. So, yeah, just pay attention if you're doing Gumpler or any Bandai kit. Pay attention to what cements you're using. Uh, when I do the Falcon, of course, I think most of it's polystyrene, so I should be okay with Tamiya cement. <clears throat> but any parts of it that are ABS, I'll have to use that. That's, that's the one good thing about Bandai. They do tell you in the be at the beginning of the instructions what everything's made out of. Right, what's chat doing? Uh, a bit quiet in chat today, I've noticed. Uh, if you are watching, we have six, 61. Wow, the 61 people watching. Holy cow. Thank you very I've never. I, I think that might be the most I've ever had watching. Thank you massively to all of you for watching. If you are watching uh, and you want to join in the chat, the, normally the chat's here for you to see it, but it's, it's hidden today. Uh, but if you are watching, you want to join the live chat, but you don't know where you can. If you're on a mobile device like a tablet or a phone, scroll down under the video screen. It should have the chat down there somewhere, most likely be under the video uh, but if you click on the youtube icon that's down here in the bottom right somewhere that'll take you to the youtube page where you can join in the live chat if you're watching this embedded on say facebook or patreon or something click on the youtube icon it'll take you to where you can live chat. but if you are watching and you've got chat there and you're lurking say hello say hello in chat come and say hello there everybody in chat is lovely you know that you've, you've seen them talking go and have a have a laugh uh, in fact, here's what gets people out of chat. Where is everybody today? And how's the weather? Where are you and how's the weather? Fox, I think you should paint the Falcon in the Battle of Britain camouflage, says Osric. Sadly, it's an E-Models build. It has to look fantastic in their display cabinet. It has to go back to that. Uh, Stephen Werner says, I forgot bench. Mortarian base, belly, toilet paper, German joke these days. <laughs> it's a German. It's a joke everywhere. <laughs> Hi creator, I've got to go. One week break starts tomorrow. Time to get back on the bench. 
Oh yeah, because you're at college, aren't you? Uh, uh, school or college. Thank you for coming in though, thy correct. I know you've gone now already, but take care, buddy. See you soon. Seducer says, model making guru, what sculpting tools would you recommend? I'm just getting back into the hobby after a 20 year hiatus. Well, here's something I would say. Um, in terms of, if you mean, do you mean like literally like you've made something out of say milliput or filler and you want to sculpt it? Or do you mean just like carving bits out of plastic, like tidying up things? It varies. I don't do the actual proper sculpting from from clay or from uh, filler or anything like that, or anything you know where I sculpt it myself because I'm rubbish. Um, but I would recommend first of all a scribing tool. This is the Tamiya uh, Mark II scriber. Other scribers are available, um, but this is a wonderful little tool. It comes with some spare blades in there. Looks rusty, but it's great. A scribing tool is different from using your knife for example you won't really see on camera but if i if i try and zoom in for you this always ends in failure you might see on the back of the knees here there's like a ribbed undersuit now there's a seam line that goes through those you can try and scrape it away with your knife but the, the problem with the knife is a knife has a pointy blade and it tends to gouge and it scrapes and it makes a nice it makes a horrible rough channel you're making basically a v-shaped channel gouges out a v-shaped channel it's not it's not as neat and tidy scribing tools tend to have more of a chisel like blade so it's a square profile it's like that not like that it's not got a point on it sharp but it's got it's got square edged or it's either the square like that or it's like that kind of shape blade <clears throat> and this means that when you drag it over a surface it makes more of a a channel a square profile channel rather than a gouge which means if you're putting a panel line into say an aircraft wing or something like that or a bit of armor on a, on a gumpler it gives you a nice clean um square shaped channel which looks more like a panel and it's neater and tidier so do get yourself a scribing tool uh if if for nothing else than just cleaning out seam lines from like rib textures and things like that if you're making warhammer stuff the undersuits uh the rib bit on the top of plasma weapons absolutely need one of these uh, other ones are available you could have a set of chisels i've never used chisels so i can't advise you on those but there are various i'm sure somebody in chat can probably suggest a good chisel set for you if you intend on getting that intense uh, if you're going to be doing things like carving detail into armor panels and gumpler and things like that I more than recommend it and actual sculpting tools i have a big collection but here's two of them uh, now i can't advise you on actual proper sculpting tools because i have a big i'll zoom out i'm zoomed in again uh, I can't advise you on specific sculpting tools because I've got a massive collection of these. I've got, let's have a look. I've got them somewhere. Doo -doo -doo. I've got uh, all of those. Now these are all different shaped sculpting tools. They look like dental tools, but they're all different shaped sculpting tools. And the reason I can't really advise you much on them is because I got them from my local pound shop. I literally walked into my local pound shop to get, I don't know, a bath mat or something. And there was a thing hanging up and it said, 25 piece sculpting tool set, one pound. I will have that. And they're all different. They're proper sculpting tools. They're, they're the kind of tools that are designed for when you've got a big block of clay and you're carving out like a face and you've got different shape bits. They're those kind of tools. Um, but just get on Amazon and have a look. Um, I'm, I'm not... Not, uh, I'm no good at scratch building, so I don't do a lot of sculpting, actual proper sculpting. So I would say you don't need to spend a fortune. Just <laughs> got a pound shop. Go and find your local thrift store pound shop and see if they've got a set. It was really completely random to find them in the pound shop. It's like buckets. Uh, there was like buckets, washing up bowls. Uh, there was scented candles, all for a pound. The scented candles, there were hair clips. There were all the kind of things you get in pound shops, you know, sets of glass, really crappy, like, you know, shot glasses for a pound, and then a set of sculpting tools next to the things for your garden. I'm like, okay, I didn't come in for those, but I shall take them. But if you're not doing actual sculpting, where you're sculpting something from a block of clay or putty or whatever you've built, if you just mean for cleaning up plastic models, um, you'd be fine with, you know, um, some scri a scribing tool perhaps uh, a good some good blades for your knife uh, and maybe a chisel set if you're doing lots of carving if you want to do like if on a gumpler panel for example you might want to create panel lines and recessed uh, areas that's where chisels might come 
I don't do that myself, so not that good. Team Inept says, uh, Orange Digital Camo Falcon. I will not respond. Pink Digital Camo, says Eric Graham. Cherokee Review says, I've put off my Falcon for the reason of not being sure how I'll paint and weather it. Uh, I think, well, I know, I know how I'll do it, I think. Uh, I just have to hope it doesn't kill it. I think I should be all right. I think I should be all right. I've got some plans. The one thing I'll say about Millennium Falcons is they are, along with Imperial Knights, they're probably one of the easiest things to paint and weather that look fantastic. It looks like it's a big job, but I'll tell you this for nothing. All of all the Falcons I've done, you can. I, it's it's one of the quicker paint jobs. I can get a Falcon. The last one I did was a commission build, and I got it built in about two. This is an old Fire Molds Falcon, so it's glue together. Built in about two days and painted and weathered in about a week, two weeks. And that was only a line for oil paints. It's not a complicated paint job. Is it, believe it or not, such a big model and so much like mess and schmutz and stuff. Complicated. I use the extra thin quick setting in a weird way. I hold the two parts together and drop the glue in. Sinks via capillary action, says Saberfane. Welcome, Saberfane. That's exactly what that is for. The beauty of extra thin and the extra thin fast setting. Traditionally, if you've got two big honking pieces of plastic and you want to glue these together, you would use, say, the thick cement or the polystyrene cement because then you can blob it on there. It won't, it, if I use any of these two, by the time I get the cement and the glue on here, brush it on, brush it on, and I'm like, it's evaporated away because they're quite fast evaporating. So that's why you use the thick cement. For big flat areas, you'd stick them together and they'd be stuck. Or, can do is you can get this or this get the two pieces get the get the glue and then touch it to the gap and it will into the it will suck into the hole via caterpillar action that's what they're for this is what you would traditionally do that with anyway this is designed where you want that but to be even faster i've got things leaked on my hand there I'm quite sure what's leaked but something's leaked somewhere i can i'm getting moisture on my hand uh, but yeah, that's what really this is for. So, and this, but this just sets faster. So if I put them together and I touch that in there, after a few seconds, I could put that down and it'd be it'd be stuck together. So where I was using the fat glue to hold the guy on the stand, it's the same kind of thing. But I've just not got around to using that. Yet. Um, these that that will be also ideal for very very tiny parts. If you're building, say, a tank or some kind of armored vehicle, and you've ever had that thing where you need to glue on a whip antenna or a, a grab handle or something that you, you kind of glue it together but it kind of moves around and you use the extra thin because it's a tiny part and it's it's not got stability because it takes a minute or two to this you go and it's gone it's set if you're repairing something classic example and i have used it for this actually a spade a shovel that goes on the side of an armored vehicle i snapped off the handle so it's like half the shovel blade and half a handle and half a handle and the grip i'm like what oh had to glue it back together uh, this would usually work for that but you'd have to mount it in such a way that it didn't move because it's this stuff stuck so it's just that but very 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 fast setting but yes using it exactly the right way the beauty of the extra thin and so on is that you can put the parts together first and then glue them together uh making models is in afternoon mr fox and all the peoples welcome carl hello 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 dad says moist fox why does dad shout fox what dad does say, moist. Uh, Candy Graham from Mongo, for everyone watching, uh, everyone watching, please click the thumbs up like icon. It helps Fox out. Oh, yes. You might not know that, but on any YouTube video, not just my stuff, but obviously please do. Any YouTube video you're watching, always click the thumbs up, the like button, because it helps that video list higher in the search results in YouTube, and therefore it gets more views, and therefore the, you, you help benefit the creator. So if you channel that you like, uh, do give them the thumbs up. Uh, Michael Elliott, afternoon all, welcome, welcome. Uh, come, welcome. Right, I did ask where people were. Dad says Cheshire and a bit wee bit windy. You're not Cheshire, Dad. You're you're Scallyland. Aye, come on, you Liverpool. I know you're not really, but it's funnier if I say you Liverpool. Aye, you ain't no Cheshire lad, like. Uh, let's have a look. Where are we? How do you do? Do says Carl. Uh. Carl is watching and playing some NMS. 
No Man's Sky, I'm going to assume. No Man's Sky. Played that for a while. I must go back to it. I couldn't get I couldn't get into the flying around because I, I went into No Man's Sky on the back of playing Elite Dangerous where I can control the ship. But with No Man's Sky, the flight controls are so chonky that it really put me off. And every time I went anywhere, it was attacked by pirates. So I, I didn't enjoy it. I need to go back to it there because it was fun. <sighs> Shaky Reviews is working on a scratch built weapons rack for his 110 scale Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures. Cool. Post pictures in the boom hut, please. Uh, oh, yeah, because we've seen, we've seen you putting up some of the Foot Clan, haven't we? Uh, Eric Gray in West Central Indiana. Snow on the ground, 40 degrees and sunny. Now, 40 degrees, that's Fahrenheit American, isn't it? So that's probably what? About four or five degrees our temperature, normal temperature. Because, you know, we, we know you Americans, you have your weird imperial system that. Nobody else uses. There's snow. Weird. It seems weird because Indiana, to me, even though it's not really much further down south than, say, the UK, it still seems like, in my mind, Indiana is like it should be the same climate as, say, you know, the Mojave Desert, in my mind. So I know it's not. I know you're much further north than that. Uh, Cynical Steve is in Mankland, Manchester, for those who don't know, and alternating rain and sunshine with a side order of breezy. Uh, Lewis says, my lovely wife has said I can have the kids and one 200 scale Titanic. Now just go convince her I need the detail set as well. Wow. You've actually got the green light for the one 200 scale Titanic. Not sure about the kids bit there. <laughs> Does that mean you get the Titanic, but you've then got to do all the housework for the kids as well? You may not have got the best deal there. The so Lewis says, not responding in chat at the moment. So I'm hacking a panel off the Ravel 196 Apollo service module so I can build the damage to Apollo 13. Cool. That's a valid excuse. Uh, Nottingham is sunny, a bit ish, a bit damp from this morning's rain, says Michael Elliott. Oh, you just near Warhammer World? Go. Go and spend all the money at Warhammer World. Uh, Quantum Man says, Fox, I don't want to freak you out, but I'm just over your left shoulder. <gasps> Do that. Uh, you made me turn around and there's a Transformer in my cabinet, and it made me look at a Transformer. And I don't look at Transformer. Uh, over your shoulder with a water pistol waiting for dad to look at that thingy over there I'm in a place called Foxhole Cornwall and it's sunny all right my babber I like the sound of Foxhole <laughs> I think I'd be quite comfortable oh, that's not a Cornish accent is it? I know I know it's about as, about as good as I can get for a Cornwall accent sorry about that my babber I know that's more Dorset than it. I live on a clay hill and I can see the south and west coast Ooh, that was nice Seducer retracts something after saying it. Space Hamster is off. It says, might check again later. Thanks for coming to Space Hamster. Maybe see you later in Chris's stream. Uh, -do 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 -do. Uh, John Kenwood says, just use scribing tools for the uh, sculpting. Uh, I want asked about the sculpting tools because I want to start adding little details to my Games Workshop minis. Oh, right, cool. Using like green stuff and epoxy and stuff. Yeah, yeah. In that case, um, just go on Amazon and just get a cheap set of sculpting tools like the one I got for a pound because they literally do have. That's the wrong one. They literally do have. Uh, you know, what have we got? We've got splunge and a pointy bit. We've got flatty bit and a wedgy piece. We've got bit with a nibble on the end that we've got probing tools we've got them kind of things with a pointy bit flat ones and there's all different and they cost me a pound so yeah go just go on uh, go on ebay or amazon even go on amazon uh, and do a quick search for sculpting tools and just go for the cheapest that you can find you don't need to spend a fortune because sculpting one of those things you're either going to be really good at it or suck like me i'm, I'm rubbish at sculpting i don't have that skill so there's no point spending a fortune you then realise you don't like it. Always. If you haven't spent much money and you, and you really take to it and you've got an aptitude for it, then you can go, I can get some tools now. And especially at this scale, you don't need big tools. Nothing like chisels and stuff. Those little those little things. Do, 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 do. Uh, point of order on latitude, says Paul at Team Inept. London is the same latitude-ish as Calgary. Yeah, well, they're used to snow. I, don't mind. I wouldn't be surprised if it snowed in Calgary. Uh, Cynical Steve says, if you have uh, if you have a The Works shop, a shop called The Works, 
uh, near you. This is, I'll start this again. This is aimed at Seducer. He says, Cynical Steve, if you have a shop called The Works near you, assuming you're in the UK, they have decent sculpting tools for a good price. Yeah, The Works is like a bookshop and they sell some basic art supplies. They have little sculpting tools. The Works is very 1990. Uh, here in Indiana during March, we can have all four seasons in less than 24 hours. Holy, holy cow. Cool. I thought Jethro was in them. Was that my was that my little accent there? That was. No, Tony, it's ancient Roman ruins. That's what it is. Jamie Bone, Dad, Jethro doesn't sound like that. I don't know who Jethro. Smoky Cowboy, welcome Smoky Cowboy says, Hello, started watching you because of the Warhammer 40 Conquest. I'll say that again, Warhammer 40k Conquest. Are you still doing any videos about it? Thanks for all your advice and tips, it really helped. Yes, I am. Uh, normally on this Sunday show, I am building up my Warhammer Conquest stuff. <clears throat> I started doing those videos, and I was showing how to paint them. I got to the point where I realised I was just following the magazine, and it was a complete waste of time, because I was showing you how to paint them in the same way the magazine said how to paint them. And A, it wasn't that good because it's not a, it's not a brilliant paint job at the end of the magazine anyway. And B, you could just follow the guide in the magazine. <clears throat> so what I'm doing instead is uh, on these Sunday shows each week, I am building up all the models. I've stopped painting them. I'm building them all up. Uh, I'm currently up to issue 47, I think. We're just partway through building the land speeder. Uh, we're going through getting them all built. And then once I've got them all built up, I will then basically sit down and paint everything and I'll film proper paint guys how to paint them properly. Not like the magazine. I'll show you how to paint them better than the magazine. Because I really, I was just parroting what the magazine said and it was a complete waste of my time and yours. So, um, yes, so on some days we're building, which is why I'm doing this, because this arrived a couple of weeks ago. Uh, some days we're building them and then when they're all done, I'll get them all painted and we'll sh I'll show you, I'll break them into things like we'll have how to paint a space marine, for example. How to paint the land raider, the land speeder, how to paint the, the repulsor, how to paint death guard, how to paint pox walkers, that kind of thing. I won't, I won't do a video for every single miniature, but I'll break them down into the units. Like, uh, you know, the repulsor, the land speeder, the, dare I say it, the motorbikes, God help us, space marine. I'll do a video for how to paint, like, you know, Lieutenant Calcium, because he's a unique figure. And I'll do, like, how to paint the, the characters, like the librarian and stuff like that. But space marines will just be a space marine. So I will get back to painting those, don't panic. But I'm just getting everything built first. And now that I've finished the big Sazabi build, and I've got all the things I can get on with, uh, I might be able to get all them built up faster now. So it might hopefully be not too long before we get to the point where everything's built and I can start filming painting. Because that would be great. I can just get everything painted. Because what's going to happen now, the one thing I will say, uh, you may not know, but the one thing I will say is that I need to wipe my nose because I've got the sniffles again. Hang on. Slap it on. Oh, sniffly nose. Of all the times in life to get a cold, the middle of a pandemic is probably the worst possible time to get a cold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the one thing I will say is, though, um, I'm doing the, the part work, the Warhammer Conquest part work, by the good graces of our good friend George, who's our current stream boss. Uh, he's basically helping me fund it. So when I've finished, we're going to split it. I'm keeping all the Death Guard, and he's getting all the Space Marines. Now, he does not want them painted like Ultramarines, and I don't want them. The Ultramarines are boring. Dave. So they're not going to be painted ultramarine colours. I'm going to be doing a different colour scheme completely. I don't know what yet, but something different. It might not even be an existing chapter. Wipe my nose again. So stay tuned. But essentially, even though I may not necessarily use ultramarine colours, I'll still be showing you how to paint, regardless of the colours. Oh, oh, just dropped my phone, so I might not get the Titanic now, says Lewis. Oops. Shoki says, oops, just drank my old coffee from last night. Hashtag wrong mug. Oh, got to go. Food is ready, says Jamie Bone. Yeah, nothing worse than drinking from the wrong mug. I like cold coffee. This this stuff could last me hours. But not coffee from yesterday. Boy, uh, but yes, welcome, Smoky Cowboy. Thank you for coming along. Hope you'll stick around for, for these shows. I do a lot of other stuff as well. But every Sunday is Warhammer Sunday. Do, 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 do. The works is an ice cream parlor in Buckinghamshire, says Totally Scale Models. Uh, here it's like a bookshop that sells books and art supplies, kind of. But it's really 1990s, I don't know why, they just have that vibe. Uh, Smoky Cowboy says, I agree, the magazine's painting are so not very good, he says. But yeah, they're, they're, a good stand, they're a good standard for... The thing about part works, and this is why I don't have a problem with them showing the sort of slightly ropey paint job. As you get towards the end of the subscription magazines, because I've got most of them now, I think I've only got a couple left. 
they actually get they take you quite a distance some of the later on they get you into more detailed painting so if you just follow the magazines they they will look all right they'll be bare minimum tabletop standard um but the reason they've done it that way is purely because the thing with part works is that part works are designed and are always aimed at people who don't make models um that's why part works are things like build the Graf Spey or build the Spitfire and stuff, and they they come pre-coloured and pre-painted, like the Millennium Falcon and the X-wing I'm doing at the minute. They come pre pre-painted and pre-coloured because for the majority of people uh, doing a part work, they just get it and they build it and they don't paint it because they've never painted a model before in their life. The difference with this one is, of course, it's Games Workshop, so the whole point is painting them. So they're not going to alienate the kind of people that because they want to attract people. This is probably the reason that Games Workshop did the whole thing in the first place, agreed to it, is they want to lure people in who have never made, don't play Warhammer and never made models before. And that's where the part work picks up on its existing customer base, people that like part work. There'll be lots of people that are doing this part work and aren't, have never painted a model before in their life. So it's they've got to kind of tailor it towards, they're not going to aim it at people that can do a Golden Demon painting. They're not going to paint it towards people that can paint even to Duncan's level. They're going to aim it at people that have never painted. So the fact that they look kind of basic, it's fine. They still look all right. They're not bad. But I can do, I can certainly get you doing much better. Uh, let's have a look. Will you do the painting on streams or videos, asked Smoky Cowboy? Uh, no, it'll be proper videos, proper non-live um, how to. I don't really do how to tutorials. They're very rare I'll do painting on live stream because it's a pain in the ass get the camera in a place you can see and as you can tell I don't get much done uh, there'll be proper how to paint videos I've not done a lot of video content over the last six to eight months for various reasons personal and otherwise but there'll be proper how to paint video so don't panic about that uh, Texas once had a blizzard earthquake forest fires and a hurricane in the same week says Shoki wow Cy Reynolds is in never fear guys your true saviour is here he says after misspelling guys well done well played sir <laughs> Welcome, Kev. How you doing, buddy? As you can see, we've had a bit of health removal from George. But not much. Only a bit of his health come off. We had a couple come through. So he's still there. But welcome, Kevin. Welcome, welcome. Awesome. I live in Portugal and we are on the fourth issue. There you go. Well, what I would say, Smokey, is just spend your time building them for now. Uh, if you want to do better than the magazine, spend your time just building them. Because it's going to be a while before I get everything built. I'm only up to issue 48 or 9 and I'm building the land speeder, so... I've got quite a little way to go, about halfway to go get everything built. But once everything's built, I can then start painting it. So don't worry. We'll, we'll get you painted up. Uh, be -be be Paul inept. Uh, Paul inept. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. I just completely insulted you then. Paul inept. Uh, he was, yeah, never mind. Uh, Paul says you should paint these, the ones that George gets. There's a boomhut chapter with a broccoli stem on the pauldron. It's a good idea. I don't think George would want that, though. Uh, uh, Stephen Werner says in Magdeburg it's sunny and 13 degrees but very stormy Ooh, 13 degrees uh, you will have a follower says Smoky Cowboy thank you very much Smoky doodle -doo, doodle -doo -doo. Cy Reynolds please read the post at the top of the chat ready to remove comment yes please please read the post uh, the pinned post at the top of the chat if you would be so kind. Uh, oh, Dad's already said that. Sorry, my apology. <laughs> Dad's already told you off. There you go. Paulie, the, uh, Chris says, Paulie Lept is about right. Lewis Williamson's going for a bit, having... Oh, st wow, hang on, words. Lewis Williamson going... Wait, I'm just talking drivel. Hang on. Nowhere near enough coffee today. Lewis Williamson, not Lewis Williamson. Going for a bit, having tea and not allowed phone at table, get told off by the kids. Oh, kids today. Psh. Hang on, that's the wrong... Isn't it normally the kids telling... Isn't it normally the parents telling the kids off for having the phone out of the table? It's, it's the wrong way around. Wow. Anyway, thank you for coming in, though, Lewis. Take care, buddy. <laughs> Dad told me on Messenger. Sorry, dude, I don't see it on mobile. Okay, uh, in that case, I apologise. Um, yeah, if you are if you are on mobile and you haven't seen it, there is a pin post at the top of the chat. We're just not discussing the current Nurgle situation, medical situation at all in chat because YouTube are demonetizing videos that that even touch on it. So this is my income. So uh, asking people not 
such matters in the chat if you can please not do uh i started warhammer when i was 11 and a half 11 to 12 now yeah started that sentence again Smokey Cowboy says, I started Warhammer when I was 11 or 12 years old and I stopped for a while. And after 16 years, I'm starting again. So excited to do it and having guidance the way you give your super. Thank you very much. I've only been doing it for a couple of years. I've only been, I've been model making for 40 years. I've only been brush painting for like three because I never used to brush paint. I used to like build armored cars and tanks and planes and stuff. Well, really play, that kind of stuff and sci-fi. Found Warhammer a few years ago. Bam, I'm in. Brush painting. Uh, yes, Cy Reynolds, you let off. You're lucky because Paul was basically saying anybody that mentions anything like that gets just the comment removed instantly, no warnings. And you get put on the naughty step, so Paul didn't attack you, so you didn't get the ban hammer. You're all right. We'll let you off. It's not your fault if you can't see the pin post. Uh, all right, what else is happening in chat? Nothing. Right, let's go with some more work. What are we on? Up to 20 to 5. We can get another bit done. So that was number one. That's all I've done today. I am rubbish. I can't ban mods, says Paul at Team Inept. Ah, <laughs> you found a weakness. You found Paul's weakness. He can't ban mods. He'd, he'd ban me if he could. Right, so 17, 18, 19, and 20 we need. 17, 18, 19, and 20. There. Uh. Doodle doodle doodle. 18 uh, cut that from 17 to 19 and 20 so that's 18 18 there doodly doodly doodly. what's been going on uh i not think of what's been going on to be honest i mean 19 there. because this is modern games workshop of course uh, the one the beauty about these um silver templar but they're not they're not actual specific silver templar minis they're just generic primaris marines 17 18 19 Uh, yeah, un unlike the rest of the stuff you're getting for the Conquest, uh, basically these are proper Games Workshop screws. The stuff you get for Conquest is uh, it's war, it's Games Workshop molds, but they're not manufactured in Nottingham because all all Games Workshop's plastic. When you buy a Games Workshop kit, they're all manufactured in Nottingham. Some of the products aren't manufactured there, but the actual the plastic you buy, the models, they're all without exception made in the Nottingham headquarters. They've just expanded their factory space over the last year or so. Um, but the stuff you get with the Warhammer Conquest, it's a different colour and it's a different texture and feel. It's different plastic. It's good. It's interesting. It's kind of... It's soft, but at the same time more brittle. Kind of, uh, it's weird plastic. Anyway, so all the stuff you've got so far has been non-manufactured, but I don't know where it's made. Or somewhere, I don't know. Somewhere is making them for, for, the, for the hachette. Which means technically I'll get, I mean, I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong here. But somehow, Games Workshop have given access to their moulds to a third party to make these these things. They probably, they probably did a one-off production run for like x amount of prints i don't know something like that anyways it's not it's not the standard stuff but these are just proper games workshop sprues because you can tell by the quality of the plastic now if you're wondering if you if you're wondering what this are these are this whole silver templar set um it is if you weren't here at the start the silver templars set they silver templars is a new Primaris chapter and they were revealed and announced within the Warhammer Conquest part work uh, and a book a sort of law book was released in the in the part work because they hadn't existed before then 
and although there's no dedicated kits for them uh your subscribers to the part work we're given the option of getting this silver templar set which is basically a pack of primaris a half squad of primaris with a captain whatever he is a lieutenant uh you get all the paints you need to paint them You get this foldable instruction thing, which is how to build them and then how to paint them. Which is a little bit more detailed than the standard Warhammer Conquest stuff. It, this, it looks like this is done. This painting guide, this Silver Templars painting guide, is Games Workshop product or not. It, it, the whole thing looks like it's not been done by Hachette. Uh, and you also get uh, what is not available at all at the moment is a set of decals for the Silver Templars, which I shall show you. Oh. Ah, Silver Templars. For which you get uh, lots of Silver Templar symbol, which is the sword with the two lightning bolts, uh, and lots of, sort of generic Space Marine markings. A few people have said they're just the same markings as for the Stormcast Eternals. They're not. These are swords with lightning bolts, not hammers with lightning bolts. And it's a specific set for Silver Templars. 40k, there's no connection with 40k and 30k. You've got your different tactical markings, you've got your, your squad markings. So yeah, you don't, you can't get these in real. They're not even available on the web store yet. So, so you get this whole pack for these new silver templars. And I wanted to get these done and painted up, uh, just because there isn't anything that much on there on the YouTubes at the minute. So, uh, Smoky Cowboy, if you are just starting with your subscription, whether it's premium or not, my word of advice is always pay attention to the letter you get each month when you get your delivery. Because things like this, there's, there's things like this and there's books that you'll get. Uh, the way it basically works, I assume it's the same where you are, is that they are all opt out. I'm going to change my blade. My blade's got super glue on it. Hang on. This is where I might get stabbed by T. So stay tuned, Paul. Are you ready? Oh, it's not coming out. Oh. Why you know come out? There we go. New blade time. Uh, uh, I need a blade. Get on my blades. Get on my blades. Yes, so they're opt out. Which basically means you'll get a letter. Iris, you'll get a letter every now and then with one of your deliveries. Paul, stand by. Uh, and it will say, next month, we're going to send you this amazing book or this amazing whatever it might be. There's some extra thing that we'll send you. There we go. Done. We're going to send you this amazing thing. And it's going to cost £14.99 or £7 or whatever. It'll be extra. You don't get them. You do get some stuff free, but these will be extra things. Uh, and they'll say, you, you're going to get this sent to you. Now, if, you, if, you, if we don't hear from you, we'll send it to you and we'll charge you extra on your next bill, on your next invoice. If you don't want to do that, you need to let us know ASAP and they'll give you a date in the letter. Now you have to look at every time you get a delivery you have to check the paperwork that comes with it because sometimes it's just an invoice sometimes it will be a letter saying here's what we're going to send you next week if you don't tell us not to we're going to send it to you and charge you now all the stuff they've done that for so far it's been kind of cool it's been like law books and fiction books and there's been some other bits and bobs and this i've not had a problem i'm collecting everything but, you know, if, if it's something you don't want, just double check. Check all the paperwork that comes each month. Check if it's something that you want. If it's not, make sure to follow the instructions to let them know. Otherwise, they will just send it to you and charge you because they're opt out. They're not opt in. They, they send them all out by default unless you tell them otherwise. So always check the paperwork that comes with every delivery every month. Just to make sure because there's quite a lot of stuff that turns up. Books and stuff. Some people might not be interested in the fiction at all. Yeah, you get some black library stuff here and there but one of them will be a silver templars book which we got about a couple of months ago 
and which is just not it's not a codex it's just a book of law about the silver templars but, and it never registered me at the time but of course the chapter there's no such chapter as the silver Templars. it was brand new I, I didn't pick up on that at all so i'm like oh yeah it's a book there you go done and then the next month they said right now we're going to send you some space marines and a how to paint guide and a whole mess of paints and the reason this is so good is this is probably i think i worked it out it's about 100 quid worth of stuff that you paid like 20 quid for or something i think because it's 20 odd quid just for the plastic space marines and then 30 odd quids worth of paint and other bits and bobs so yeah worth it so yeah oh any anyway, the moral of the story always check the letters that come with your delivery just to make sure that you don't suddenly realize <clears throat> you've just paid an extra 30 quid for something you didn't want all option everything's optional yeah everything's for sale i paused a disappointed now uh, do, 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 do. where are we uh yeah fox there we go uh something 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 it's cast in japan just like the space marine heroes says cy reynolds okay oh you get proper intercessors in the silver template templar box <clears throat> instead of that horrid blue plastic as always fox says what i think damn it <clears throat> i think that's interesting then it's cast in japan just like the space marine heroes cool i was i did wonder about with games workshop Giving anybody in China access to their molds will probably be a big no-no for obvious forgery, fraud type reasons. It's in Japan, that makes more sense. It's cast in Japan, just like the Space Marine Heroes, like the blind box is not the Space Marine Hero blisters you buy in the Warhammer store. I do have some Space Marine Heroes. But Jamie, who isn't with us at the minute because he's gone for his dinner, uh, did send to me very, very nicely. I can't get the box open now. I've got a load there, you see. Oh, I thought these aren't the Japanese ones, obviously. I do have a Japanese one somewhere. Jamie sent me all those. I must get around to baking them at some point. I've still got them, Jamie. Don't worry. They have not been forgotten. Uh, seducer. I'm going to have to search eBay for one of the original white metal ones. For what that is. Uh, which are you missing, Seducer? Fox in a stream, three hours, gets a torso and legs done. Chris in an hour and a half, paints four, gets four planes done, says Eric Graham. Uh, and Kevin says, yep, yeah, Fox still finished his Cesarbi before me. <laughs> yeah. Paul says, Chris also doesn't spend an hour on each nub. Yeah, I do, uh, I do spend a long time cleaning up nubs and stuff. Plus, I'm also doing chat. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, right, I saw the Dubsclay's dice for so long. I'm going to seduce talking about stuff. The novel that came with the 80th issue, 74 to 78, was a good read, says he owns car. Cool. I do actually have here the latest delivery. I've not opened it yet. But the, I don't, I, there's something in there that's there's quite heavy, and this feels like more than four magazines. I don't know what's in there. I think that's issue 75, 6, 7, and 8, I guess. I don't know. I've got Series 3 waiting. That's the Death Guard set with unique sculpts. Lovely models. I'll get to them in 60 years. Yes, how have you not finished your Sazabi yet, dude? I mean, I finished, even I've finished mine. <laughs> I can say that now. No mercy for anyone that's not finished their Sazabi. <laughs> I mean, it did take me like a year, more than a year, it's forever. Enjoyed it though, it was a good build. The thing with that Sazabi is it looks like, it looks like the kind of kit that's so complicated it make your pop a brain cell. But the, that's the trick with, with any Bandai Gumpler kit. Especially the complicated master grades, even like you know the full army unicorn, the stuff which gives me cold shivers. Uh, they look really super complex, but once you actually get down to the brass tacks, once you start assembling it, they're all kind of much of a muchness. Even the most complicated ones are not that complex. 
basically, if you built one Gunpla, you built them all. They're always the same assembly. They're always like chunk of parts to make the arm, upper upper arm, lower arm, and then the arm. They're always the same. It's one of the beauties of them. So even the most complex, uh, terrifying looking of a Gunpla is. Box, your delivery is just the repulsor tank. The four mags and sprues for the full tank and base are heavy. Okay. Could well be it. Could well be it. Looking forward to that repulsor tank. It's a shame I've got to give it up. George, really. <laughs> Can't complain. I was, like I said before, I was, I was, when it first decided that me and George would split it, and I said to George, well, you know, you decide whether you want the Death Guard or the Space Marines. It's your choice. You've made this possible. So he chose a space marine, and at first I'm like, oh, I kind of wanted the space marine, but I'm not going to say no because you know he's made this entire thing possible. So, but then since I've been like you know building up the the Death Guard models, I actually quite like them a lot now. I'm like, you know what? I'm actually quite happy that I'm keeping the Death Guard because look at all the intricate paintwork I can do and all the all the grot and gore and all the awesomeness I can have fun with those. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to painting them now. So now I'm not so sad that I'm actually getting to keep the Death Guard. Because I think, I think in all honesty, the Death Guard are a lot more interesting than the... Yeah, the Space Marines get the Repulsor and the Land Speeder, which are mint kits. But at the same token, the Death Guard's just, just much more filthy, dirty. I plan to magnetise the Repulsor tanks in the Ons car. I should probably do some magnetization, but I'm just far too lazy. I've got tons of magnets. I'm far too lazy, and I'm not. I've said it before. I shall say it again. Uh, there are there are two types of model makers. Well, there's three types of model maker. There's the builder, there's the painter, and then there's the builder and painter. Builder is someone that enjoys the build part of the process, like Steve with his scratch builds. The builder is someone who, for whom the focus of the whole focus of the hobby is the is the building, the construction. They're not really not really that bothered about the painting. They don't really care about that. For them, it's the building side of it, and they're the kind of people that also have they have you know they go off and do like woodwork and they make things out of wood and metal and other things. They usually get involved in other part other types of crafts. Because that's where their passion is. Their passion is creating something, building something, either from scratch or you know the, the kind of people that do part works as well. Because they don't need to paint. Uh, and then you have the painter, the painter who who pure passion. The only focus for them, the bit they enjoy the most, is getting the thing painted up. Um, you know they they don't like the building side of it. That doesn't really interest them at all. What they really like is the painting side of it. That's where they get to be creative and express themselves. That's where their forte lies. That's where get this piece off and I've just put on or oh, glue it. Screw it or glue it. So that's the painter. The kind of person that enjoys enjoys the painting side of it. Uh, and they just see the, the building as a necessary evil. And then of course you get the kind of person that enjoys all of it, the building and the painting. I firmly put myself in the painting camp. See the building as a necessary evil. Uh, I enjoy it to a certain degree. I enjoy it in certain situations. Like I enjoy Games Workshop kits because they go together effortlessly, for the most part. For the not always, but for the most part. Uh, for the most part, they're fairly reliable. They go together quite nicely, and they don't give any problems. That's also why I love the Bandai stuff, because they go together with literally no effort. <laughs> you can just, so I can actually have fun building Gumpler, because there's no skill involved. But I don't enjoy it as much as, for me, it's all about painting. That's where, that's where my interest lies. Because I, I am not a great, and because I focus on painting and not the building, of course. Oops. I can't even get this leg to go in. What am I doing now? Uh, because I my 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 passion is the painting and not the building. Of course, I tend to either get through the building as quick as I can, or avoid it altogether if possible. I build Bandai, which is why my build skills are not great. I'm not, I'm useless at 
scratch building i have no idea I, i'm useless at customizing things again not a clue no skills i avoid it as much as i can so i'll always put my focus into the painting and i can't remember what the point of this entire conversation was but that's the way it is uh but yeah for i'd say death guard i don't know if this was my original point for death guard there's much more painting fun to be had a death guard and much more you anyway fox in terms of painting much more room for heavy weathering and grime says Ty Reynolds. see i do say what he's thinking but yes in terms of magnetization that's why i don't I have the magnets i know the concept but i don't get around to doing it because that's getting into involved in the building side again which is not what I enjoy and if you know you've, you've watched me build on these live streams you can see how inept i can be as a builder how 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 bad i can be i can take simple instructions and confuse myself i can snatch defeat from the jaws of victory no effort it comes to building because it's not my forte so all about the painting all about the painting so yeah probably wouldn't get round to magnetizing any of them because purely because it extends the building part of the process which is not just as much yes an example a perfect example of course is my ongoing battle with death cora creed figures that frustrate me knowing because i can't figure out the arms and i hate working with resin anyway uh, so the the solution i've come up with that is of course the one that works best for me is that when it comes to 10 man death Cora Krieg scrods from now on I'm not even going to bother buying them as kits I'm just going to go on eBay and buy you'd be surprised how many people sell like squads of minis built and primed and that's it or just built and not primed at all so I, I do want to build up a death Cora Krieg army I will still buy you know the vehicles and the little two-man heavy weapon squads and the, the two-man thud gun squads and things because like they're fine I can, I can coordinate the arms on those guys not a problem but when it's like big squads of five or ten people no i'll be going on ebay and i'll be uh, getting the ones that somebody else has made that i can just paint because I'm trying to put those death core I've, I've got a squad of 10 death core firing infantry firing yeah, that was one of the most frustrating experiences in my model making career and they're back in the bag and I'll never touch them again. So yeah, I'll be buying those kind of things pre-made from me. I know it's not ideal because I'm not supporting Games Workshop, but at the end of the day, this is a fun hobby. And if I'm not having fun, it shouldn't be part of my hobby. But I want Death Core. Got me a Macarius Vanquisher tank and my Malkador Infernus that George bought me. Thank you very much, George. The Secret Santa. I want to get them built. I've got my Bane Blade. Yes. Well, I've got a Bane Blade. Because um, because part of my income is building and selling my builds, and I haven't done that for about a year. Uh, when I do build my Bane Blade, it's probably going to be the, the one I've got at the minute in my stash will probably be a build it and sell it job. But I will slowly build up a squad of sort of death core vehicles. But I got the, the Death Core Tank Command crew that I will apply to a Bane Blade at some point. Because I quite fancy building up some Death Core. Just to be contrary and different, because nobody has Death Core. Well, nobody I know that plays. <laughs> Afternoon, childrens. Oh, it's a scale model vamp, and all I can, all, you know, vamp. When you said that, all I can hear in my voice, in my head, is three, is three dog. Just, just going in my head now. Uh, what was his line? Good afternoon, children. It's three dog. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. It was a terrible three dog voice. But you know, if you play Fallout Three, it's not. He it doesn't actually say good afternoon, children. He goes, children. I'll shut up now. Shutting up now. So if you don't mind, I'll power down for a minute. Yes. Yeah, so basically, uh, as as a not a builder but a painter, I think for my my desire and dream for a Death Guard army and force of some sort, it'll be it's more than two figures. I will be buying them reassembled on eBay. You'd be surprised. I say how many people actually they build them. 
bearing in mind it's an absolute cluster flock to build them. Take some skills as a build to get them things built. They build them and they prime them and that's it. It's like, oh, really? Well, not that I'm complaining because it means I can go on eBay and buy them for 30 quid. Thank you very much. Uh, if worse comes to worst, of course, they were pre painted, I can just debt all them. Yes. So I will eventually, over time, build up a little death core force. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking. My plan is my big plan, you see. I'll have. I'll have lots of like Death Core Krieg dudes. It'll take me a long time because they cost a fortune. It'll take me a long time to even when you buy them pre-built. It'll be a long-term project. I'll have a load of Death Core dudes. And we'll have the the squad at rest and the infantry firing, and we'll have the man score. We'll have all the dudes on horsey horses, uh, even though they're like four hundred pounds each. Very slowly, I'll build up a squad of horsey horses. But I think we'll obviously have a focus on our on the. Uh, Artillery as well and vehicles because that's where they that's where they shine really. So um, we'll see how the um, Macarius Vanquisher tank bill goes. I get the feeling it's going to be quite fun. But I know it's resin and I hate resin, but it looks like anything I need to do to it might be just basic, simple things like straightening things out. Which I, you know, barrels a bit wonky, just straighten it. As long as it's stuff I can fix with a bit of heat and bending, I'm quite happy. Uh, I've got my Malkadorian furnace. Yeah, that's the same kind of thing. I'm, I love that kind of World War One look. And they're just begging to be weathered because you know the Death Corps, they're known for their love of their entrenching tool. They dig trenches. They're like moles. That's what they do. So I'll get I'll get a squad of them. Something just happened, but I don't know what. Gunman B, subscribe. Thank you very much. Your subscription so we'll get we'll get some vehicles and stuff but i think what i'm going to do is when we get some vehicles done when i get my my vanquisher and stuff and my malkador and i'll give them a bane blade or two as well i think what i'm going to do is give them a very specific color scheme because you see death core and a lot of the time death core armor they can do hydras and stuff as well the hydras and the wyverns they can do those vehicles a lot of times they're just painted in that kind of World War II German European theatre colour scheme, which is the sort of German grey, which is a lovely colour if you're making a mark, mark, you know, a Panzer III or Panzer IV, early, early uh, World War II Panzer III. Four. Don't get me wrong. If, if you're building an Opal Blitz and it's not Africa Corps, that German grey colour scheme, it's great fun to work with. It's really nice, but kind of boring when you've got a whole squad. I think what I'm going to do. When I do my death call, is I'm going to paint them in the style of the uh, World War II British Matilda tank. Remember at Christmas for the E models build, uh, I did the little Meng Matilda tank, which has that wonderful, wonderful, beautiful colour scheme. I'll get it out for a second. It's got that beautiful colour scheme of the, the desert tan, the olive green, and the light blue really nice color scheme because it's, it's varied but it's also interesting i like that I, and you know it's got like the rusty exhaust on it as well works the rusty colors make it look fantastic when you put earth tones over it like powers and pigments it really comes together works so i think when i get around to doing my my death core vehicles i don't know about the color scheme for the actual guys but i think for the vehicles we'll be doing that kind of matilda uh I don't know if it was specific to a specific theatre like the, the Desert Rats thing or LL Main colour scheme or if it's the European theatre but that kind of colour scheme I shall show you if you didn't see it last time now, of course being me I took the tank and I warhammered it up anyway that kind of I'll zoom in a bit that kind of colour scheme that I'm thinking for my death core when I get round to doing their vehicles you've got like the this I think now these are standards if, if I think it was Zandri dust death will forest I think and the blue was wasn't Vallejo color and I think it was steel gray which is blue not French blue which is gray 
one of the three. It might be like rust gray or something. But and then you get like the red and white stripes on the side. So this is so these are the actual proper colours for a World War Two Mantilla tank. It, they literally had these colours and these stripes down the sides. That's what that's, the only thing I've done different is took some Warhammer stick stickers on it, uh, decals, and put the death's heads on them and stuff. The Aquila stuck him in the top. Everything else is what it looked like in World War Two. Literally these three colours, the white stripes. Now the reason I like them so much is when you spray on like your your your, your buff on the bottom to get that dusty effect. These are actually white and red. This is white stripe, red stripe, and white stripe. But the buff over the top really makes it all blend in. So it's got that kind of desert buffy dust look. But when you mix that with, say, the rusty colours for the exhausts, and it all just really works nicely. So I think that's the kind of colour scheme I might use for my Death Core vehicles, just because it's a bit different. Put this away. It's a bit different to the usual thing you see on Death Core, which are usually just in your greys or your German greys, which are fine, but right quick look at chat Owen's car says he plans to magnetize the repulsor tank but he does need magnets first always a winner mm -mm -mm. death guard is the best fox be honest you don't want the space marine bikes yeah uh, there may be three <laughs> I like this beyond hope says there may be three types of builders but there are ten types of people those who understand binaries and those who don't. I like that. <laughs> uh, Cynical Steve says, It's not that I'm bothered about painting Fox. I'm just bad at it, but I do enjoy the building more. Okay, I didn't. I, I thought you just didn't enjoy the painting much. But the best way to not be bad at painting, Steve, is to do more of it. To do more. Watch all my videos and Chris's videos and everybody's videos and watch all the videos in the world. And then just basically just steal from us. That's why I do what I do. My entire intent is that you watch my stuff and steal all my ideas. So just, just rip off my ideas. That's, that's what I do. I feel free. Feel free. Steal my ideas. And, uh... Uh, people are talking about something, but I don't know what they're talking about. So I'll jump over that bit. Uh, scale model vamp came in and did a three dog. Uh, Sisters of Battle Rhino is only £28 on Goblin Gaming Beyond Hope. If you go through Fox's link, you'll support him too. Yes, there is a link. If you need to buy some Games Workshop stuff, there's a link in the description below this video for Goblin Gaming. They're my good mates. They're only half an hour away from me. Go and check them out. If you use that link, not only can you save 20% RRP on all Games Workshop stuff, 20% off straight away. Bam. Done. There you go. Literally. I'm not going to give you some examples because my math is terrible, but 20% off RRP always. If you use that link, not only are you making big savings, but you're also helping me because it's an affiliate link and I make a little tiny bit of income from every time you use that because it tells them I sent you. Um, so it doesn't cost you any more, but it all racks up and I get a little payment each month if I've had enough buying through my link. So if you want to get some Games Workshop stuff or other tabletop stuff, Goblin Gaming is in the link description below the video. Thank you, Sai, for that. Uh, Beyond Hope says needs to finish his Skaven army first, then the Fire Slayers, Warcry, Warband, then I'll focus on the Sisters of the Bloody Rose. I do like the Sisters of Battle. They just look so insane. Insane. LD and Dad. Hey, LD. Welcome, LD. Didn't see you in the chat there. He's working on his Frost Giant. Talking to Dad. Oh, yes, I've seen that one. You want to, you said about adding extra beard hair with some green stuff. Yes. Uh, I have a suggestion for a Bane Blade paint choice, says Chris at Gross Models, and I'm just going to stop listening there. <laughs> Smokey says, wondering with my buttons, what type of hat do you have? Uh, I have many hats. I have uh, all cheap. The... Uh, the one I used to wear on the e-model show, the blue one, was actually £5 from Matalan. It's like a straw thing, but it's actually survived somehow. The one I've got now is uh, a little sort of trilby with the rolly-up brim, but it's you can't see from there because it's zoomed in too far. But that thing that I wear for the uh, e-model stream now, it's a little bit too small, but I don't really care. That cost me like 20 quid from... Um, Flex Palace in Manchester, actually. That one, but it'll do for now. I do like very small brim trilbies with black black uh, bands, but they're very hard to find. Especially ones that fit my head that's the wrong shape. 
Yeah. Oh, you mean the hat? This one. Oh, right. Sorry, this is a magnifying visor. Yes. It's just uh, I've got all my eyes, so I can't see real. This is really, really old. Um, and it's lost all the attachments and bits that clipped on. It's just a real old magnifying thing. So I can see a bit better, but I have to see because I, I'm too old to see properly. Wondering about the shot, I painted them on myself because I had to go and do some painting in my local Warhammer store. And I thought, if I just sit there as an old bloke with a beard and this thing on my head, painting something, I look like the kind of person you wouldn't want hanging around children. So I painted that on just to make myself look less like a... Yeah, you know what I'm going on. Yes. I didn't want to look like I had no life and lived in the basement. There's nothing sadder than a middle-aged man working on Warhammer, surrounded by young people making Warhammer. It just doesn't look cool, so I had to cool myself up somehow. <sighs> Ildi says, looking at some Reaper minis today. We'll be making an order later. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to try and do my Bane Blade, says Cynical Steve, as it's... As if it's built out of bits, other ones just not sure how to start. Yeah, Steve's made this fantastic bane blade with like a thousand guns on it. <laughs> all, all bits stuck on. And it looks fabulous. Earl D says, my pal went to his local games workshop. They shifted a lot of stock this weekend. I gotta go and get me some more yellow tomorrow. My second pot of flash gets yellow. I've died over three weeks, used it once. Yeah, they can dry out quite quickly. Smoky Cowboy says, will they send stuff to Portugal? I don't know there's many much modelling shops here in Portugal South. Uh, yeah, they ship in the EU and UK. They probably do do Portugal, I think. Yes, Smoky Cowboy just confirmed he's asking about my, my magnifier visor. You can, you can get these things on Amazon or from any hobby stores. They're just visors. Um, you can get ones with like lights and stuff and loads of different lens attachments. And they can get quite expensive to be honest again go on amazon and just buy the the most basic cheap one you can find i've I, this came with a load of lenses that i never used it came with a flippy down thing that I ripped off because it got in the way uh, uh i just need because i've got I, I also wear different glasses when i work i've got like specific reading glasses for close at work so i put these on and i wear this just to give me a bit of an extra boost but you don't need to spend a fortune I had one with a light on the top and all it did was made it heavier and gave me headaches. So just go for the cheapest one if you need one. Cheapest one. I envy people that can sit there and paint like this without any kind of anything to to help their eyesight because I, I have to get close and paint really. That's why painting minis for me is quite hard because I get really close to see. Mm -mm. Cynical Steve says about his Bane Blade. There's a backstory where it's the last remaining Bane Blade on the planet that's had a dreadnought grafted to it, making it sentient, and it wanders the planet, cleansing the you know scum. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Except if it becomes sentient, that means it's an AI, and that makes it technically a heretical vehicle, and they'd have to destroy it because AI is forbidden. Ethereum. So if it became self-aware, it would have to be destroyed because that's heretical. Uh, do Goblin Games have Reaper minis? I do not know. Phil Lewis got to go. Bye all. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Uh, they may do. I suspect they will. Uh, Sabre Fane. Today's job, lot find. First even model I got. First ever model I got. An all plastic box of dread. Stripped first time using colour shift paint. Not seen it on the web store. Maybe they don't. I do not know. Candy Grand for Mongo says, Reapers HQ is not far from where I live. You can buy minis there, see their showcase and take a tour. Yes, I'm just grateful I don't live anywhere near in near Nottingham because if I live near Warhammer World, I will be screwed. I could quite happily, if I live near Warhammer World, I could quite happily go in there for lunch every day because Bugman's uh, Cafe is really awesome. Got me Bugman's mug. <laughs> yeah, Bugman's the Cafe is really awesome. The food's really nice. I could go in there and have lunch every day and then I'd be, of course, I'd, yeah, I'd be in Warhammer World. And I've said before, I can't stand resin. I hate working with resin because it's a nightmare. Yeah, I went into Warhammer World and came out with 130 quid worth of uh, a Forge World resin tank. You can't, you can't resist it when I'm there. And I'm like, oh, you walk in Forge World and you see all the things. And you're like, I need all of these things. I can't afford any of them. And I hate resin, but I need all of them. I need the oh. Worst thing I ever did was go past Forge World and then not carry on going past. Box, do you use Ravel paint? Says Carolina. Uh, nope. I use um, Citadel paints. I use Vallejo paints. 
either Vallejo game color, Vallejo model air, or Vallejo just the model paints. Um, and I also have a collection, a huge collection of Tamiya paints that I often use for airbrushing. Specifically, if I need to do like masking, if I've got a color that I need to put some masking over, like for stripes and things, I'll tend to use Tamiya paints because they're quite tough, they're lacquers, so they're more durable to the tape than acrylics. But no, I've never, never used Revell paints. I've never had, not had any experience of them, to be honest. If anybody's used Revell paints out there, do let Carolina know what they're like. Yeah. And I'm, but yes, I've only been, up until when I started doing Games Workshop stuff and I started to learn how to brush paint, I'd only have used Tamiya paints um, because they, I, everything was airbrush. When I started to learn how to brush paint and realised that Tamiya paints were absolute garbage for brush painting, um, I got a really itchy nose. Hang on, tickly nose. Uh, I start. I got myself some. Well, I got myself some Citadel paints first because it was watching the Warhammer TV videos that got me into brush painting and Citadel minis. Uh, but then I uh, I broke out further from that into the Vallejo colors. They're really nice paints. I've also got a load of the Ammo by Make acrylic paints, but I do not recommend them for airbrushing unless you know what you're doing or even for brushing and um, they're not like normal paints the ammo by mig paints are kind of they're almost professional level you have to apply them especially airbrush you have to apply them a certain way they're not like normal acrylic paints so i don't recommend acrylic ammo by mig acrylics for anyone who's just a beginner um i've not really i've got a problem brushing them although they seem a bit thicker and shinier than most acrylic paints i'm not using vallejo or citadel but for me, Citadel brush, Citadel paints for me are the best ones to brush. Brush paint. In my experience, of course, you may find different. I think Citadel are the best for brushing. Very closely followed by the Vallejo Game Color and Air Model Air colors. Um, I'm a by make. They're all right, right. Not for brushing and for airbrushing. They're really nice airbrushing, but you have to know how to use. Them. If you're just starting out airbrushing, don't buy Ammo by make paints. Learn how to airbrush properly first. Michael Elliott, Warhammer World is only 15 minutes by tram from me, says, he says, whoa. Well, Cy Reynolds is worse. He lives like down the road from it. So. <laughs> Dad says, when I said about going into Forge World, Chris says, we tried to stop you. And Dad says, yep, couldn't get him out of Forge World like a kid in a sweet shop. It really was. He still escaped. He did escape and got back in and still came back with the wrong thing. Yeah, I went to, I have to give them credit. I went into Forge World, said, I want the Macarius Vanquisher. So I said to the guy, I would like, please, a Macarius Vanquisher. He said, certainly, here is a box. Please give me all your monies and a kidney. So I did. Got home, opened it up. It was completely the wrong tank. It was a totally different Macarius tank. I was like, oh, it was a Punisher, I think. And I'm like, well, that's not the right one. And it even says on the box, it's the wrong one. So I, I mailed them. And they were really, I said, yeah, okay, no problem. Just send it back and we'll send you the right one out. Uh, and I'm like, okay, well, a bit of a pain in the bum. But I sent it back. Uh, and he said, S send it back, send me a proof of postage, and we'll send the replacement out. So I, I, I posted it back to them. I could have just driven to Warhammer World in an hour. I posted it back, and then I sent him an email saying, hi, here's the proof of postage. Within two minutes of me sending a mail saying, here is the proof that I posted it back, I had an email saying, brilliant, we've sent the replacement to you. Like, wow. They didn't even wait to get it back. They just waited for me to prove I posted it. And then they sent me the Vanquish. I was like, yes. And it was, you know, I didn't get angry about it. The guy just picked up the wrong box. Or the wrong box may have been in a pile of Macarius Vanquish. I mean, it's a white box with no artwork on it. And it's just a little sticker that says Macarius Punisher or whatever. Whatever it was. He just made, he just picked up the wrong one. And I didn't check it. He didn't check it. That Vanquish. Can't wait to make that. I really hope it's not an absolute nightmare because that will make me really sad. Lewis Williamson, I'm back. Did I miss anything? Nope, nothing at all. I've done two dudes now. Mostly built two dudes. Uh, Fernando Moraes is in. Welcome uh, for Moraes, I should say. I, I suspect Fernando. Welcome, Fernando. I'd love to visit Warhammer World after seeing the photos posted to the group, says Candy Graham for Mongo. The best way to think of it is it's kind of, it's just like a normal Warhammer store, really, but with more stock. And an enormous display cabinet the size of a warehouse. Plus a really nice restaurant and Forge World. It's really just that. It's just basically a store on their on their on their business premises. But it's a really nice store. 
just it's a store with a map. Yeah, but it's it's worth just. I mean, you have to pay extra to do the tour, but it's worth going around the. You know, going around the the exhibition center. The only thing I really wish they did, and I know they can't. I know they, I know why they can't, but it's a real shame. It'd be really awesome if they did like a Bandai thing, because you can go to the Bandai factory and you can go around on a little guided tour and you can see the machines working and stuff like. That. You can see how it. It would be really cool. If you could go to Warhammer World, go in the stop shop, pay all because the thing is, right, you walk in the door, the first thing you do is you walk into the store. You walk in the door and it's the store. To your right is uh if you go to your right, it's Forge World, and then you've got the big gaming table area, and then Bugman's off to the side of that, the restaurant, the cafe thing. The gaming table area is massive. You basically walk in the door, you're in the store, you've got Forge World there, you've more money going out. Uh, you've got you go to your left you go around and that's how you go into the museum kind of thing i think it's a real shame if they if i know they probably can't but if they could somehow do like a a, a carefully constructed tour so you can see how it all comes you can see the factory floor you can see where the things are made you can see people designing stuff they can't obviously but it would be awesome i'd pay money for that uh, it would be awesome if warhammer world had space for people who to model while they're buying the shop go to the build paint area with some of the gw staff to offer support for newcomers in the hobby yeah it would be quite good that they've got the gaming area but they don't seem to have a building and painting area uh steve Moyner says i know a guy that paints 40k minis with ravel paint in a grim dark style it looks awesome snowman's in hi snowman i've got itchy nose again uh, the real the for the for roberto who asked about the, the ravel paints um the real thing to the real thing to take into account when you're looking at different acrylic paints because Ravel, Ravel paints are just acrylic paints like Citadel and um, P3 and Vallejo and all the others. For me, the the trick within the acrylic paint is how opaque is it. That's the real thing. How opaque is it? What's the pigment like? Is it good pigment? If I thin it, if I dilute it down, does it stay together? Does it go gritty and horrible? Uh, or you know, I want to know that if I if I do a couple of coats of a color, it's going to completely cover whatever's underneath it unless it's specifically meant to be a translucent paint which is where say citadels have got their base and layer paints base paints are meant to be opaque so if i've got black primer and i do two coats of avalon sunset it's yellow it's not green uh if i've got a crappy paint two coats of the crappy yellow over black primer may look green so it's about the quality of the paint i don't know about the ravel paints i've, I've heard good things and bad things but i've never used them so i can't say um i've no idea i i don't know if they're good coverage for me it's all about the coverage though if your coverage is one thing do they do they cover nicely do you have to do lots and lots of coats to get rid of whatever's underneath or is it just one or two coats that's the trick if you have to do lots and lots and lots of coats the paint's garbage unless it's meant to be you know a transparent paint like a layer paint where you can use it for glazes and things Ah, Bill Hope says Fox has been scratching his nose all stream. Know what that means? All those Death Guard is built have given him a case of the Nurgle. Now, I, something something irritates me. I've just got a cold at the minute. It's just a cold, just a cold. Uh, I know a guy. Uh, where are we? I need a chaperone. Who, uh, cynical Steve says about Warhammer World. I need a chaperone who would keep my wallet away from me if I went to Warhammer World. I walked into the store, yeah, you, literally, you walk in the front door, the, you walk into the store, and the first thing you see when you walk in the store is all the crap you can't buy anywhere except Warhammer World. And one of them was a Predator tank and uh, something else. It might have been a Chimera, it might have been a, a, a Predator and something, it's like a two armoured, two tanks in a box set that's exclusive to Warhammer. I'm like, oh, I need that. I didn't need it at all, but it's right there you walk in and the first thing you see is the crap you cannot buy anywhere else like a, a box with two tanks in it i'm like oh chris says fox always sniffles while he's live i think he's allergic to video it's true the camera goes on the lights go on and he knows runs we are prisoners of our own biology Because I've never been to Warhammer World. Is that the Land Raider Rhino HQ box, says Saber Fade? It might well be that one, yes. It's exclusive to Warhammer World. I'm like, oh, I need to buy it now because I can't get anywhere else. I might never come back to Warhammer World. And if I don't buy it, I'll... I got the fear of missing out. I got FOMO. I didn't buy it because instead I went to Warhammer World and spent all my money on a Macarius Vanquisher. 
Eric Graham says, never leave Dad alone in the Warhammer store. Yes, because he came out with an enormous go uh, uh, orc stomper or whatever it was. So for anyone visiting Warhammer World, take out a new mortgage. You will need it, says Beyond Hope pretty much. Uh, hope it's just a cold. Been stuck in since Wednesday and not been allowed to go out since next Saturday. Yeah, it's just sniffles. It's just a, it's just a cold. Cynical Steve says, as soon as I saw the Forge World Smaug, I was on the dark web getting bits, bids on my kidneys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've got the big Smaug, Smog. I don't do Lord of the Rings. It's all Ponzi nonsense to me. Big Smaug. It's like 350 quid. Oh. Yeah, Dad, Dad bought the Stomper. Dad bought the Orc Stomper. Stabberty. Welcome, Stabberty. Says, I never knew about Warhammer until I started watching Fox's streams and Chris. Yeah, I, 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 I knew about Warhammer. I mean, this is the thing I, this is the thing I, I have to remind myself. I've only been brush painting for like four years. I knew of Warhammer, but I'd never built a Warhammer kit, and I can't remember really what triggered me off. Start. I've kind of stopped building. I'm just waffle for half an hour. Um, I don't know what started me. I'll take this thing off. I don't know what started me off. Because uh, I was quite happily there building me Gumplet and Gundams and me all that bits and bobs, and then I think. I can't remember exactly what happened, but I must have stumbled across something on YouTube. I must have stumbled across somehow uh, a Duncan video from Warhammer TV or something. And I, I watched it and was like, oh, what's this? And I suddenly got interested. Uh, and then I kind of binge watched everything Duncan made on Warhammer TV for like three years. Uh, and then I decided that I needed to basically have all these things. <laughs> That's what I did. And that just got me into it. So then I went I went to my local Warhammer store, into which I'd never been before. Came out with the Tau Piranha. Um, although uh, Chris, the manager there, was like, oh, you like Gumpler? You might like these Tau. <laughs> Give me like the battle suits. I'm like, yeah, I want that. So I got a Tau Piranha, and that was that was just more my first thing, that Warhammer thing that I made. And that was good fun. I enjoy building it. I remember what I said earlier on, keep in mind that I'm a painter, not a builder. So I'm always... I'm, I'm, my got thumbs all the way over there. I don't enjoy the building part. So keep in mind, when I got the Tau Piranha, it was like, okay, I traditionally make a gumpler where I just put things together and then the painting is the fun bit. Now I've got a glue kit. I haven't made a glue kit for a long time properly. So I went in with it with some trepidation because I was making a glue kit that I don't enjoy doing. And it was dead good fun. I enjoyed it. And it's an old kit, but I was like... <gasps> This was brilliant. And then I, I, I watched the videos to learn how to use the Citadel paints and painted it. I was like, well, brush painting is great because I'd grown up painting with Tamiya paints and Tamiya paints are garbage to brush paint. But I didn't know that. I thought I was bad at brush painting until I realised that it wasn't me that sucked at brush painting. It was Tamiya paints that suck at brush painting. Nearly said a rude word then. Uh, and I realised that there may be a chance that I might be able to learn how to brush paint if I just stopped trying to use really bad paints. And that opened my eyes, and then that got me into it, and then I got more kits, and I got other bits, and then it kind of spiraled from there, and that's how I really got into it. Now, I am not, by any long shot or any means, a good painter. I am not role model for how to paint Warhammer, but I'm learning, and I'm sharing my journey of learning with all you guys. You know, there's people out there that are vastly superior painters to me, massively, obviously. You know, I'm still learning. I'd have only been doing it for a few years. But I'm more than happy to show where I am. Because at the end of the day, yes, you've got people that are like hardcore. I know how to paint properly. Here's how you do it. Bang. There you go. And you want to watch them because you want to see the good stuff being made. I'm the kind of person that says, listen, I'm a beginner. I'm still learning. You're a beginner. You could learn how to paint every metal style straight away, but you wouldn't know what the hell you were doing. Or you could... I could show you how I do it, and you can use that as a, a jumping off point. Get yourself to where you can do it the same as me, and then you can start to learn the more complex things that I don't know, that I can't show you. So there's always a place, uh, you know, for people, because people often ask me about doing YouTube videos, and I always say, you know, you don't have to be a hardcore professional top-notch painter or builder to do YouTube tutorial videos. You don't have to approach it from the, the viewpoint of, I know everything, and I'm going to show you how to do it. You don't what you can say is i know crap about anything and i'm learning and i'm going to have you join me on the journey because you're probably in the same situation and why not learn with me so 
you know, do you want to learn quantum mechanics straight away, your first day of secondary school, or do you want to learn actual maths first and basic physics and then work your way up to quantum mechanics, and string theory and M theory? Yeah, you don't go into secondary school on your first day and start learning about M theory. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. So basically, I, I never claim to be good at anything. I just say, listen, I'm learning. I'm figuring it out. Come and join me. There's infinite number of people out there who are vastly beyond my level of skill who will get nothing at all from watching my content. And that's fine, because hey, they don't need to watch my content. Oh, uh, where are we? Snowman HFC. Has anyone built their repulsor tank yet? No, nope, mine's still in the envelope back there. I've got mine today and not opened it yet. Nickel Steve says he's half built the impulsor, which is a flatbed version of the repulsor. It's a kit. Of the building, don't like the painting, says Stabity. We were talking about that earlier on. If you weren't here, there's I said there's three types. There's builders, painters, and there's both. Builders like making stuff, but hate painting. Painters like me, hate hate building stuff, but love the painting. And then there's people that like all of it. Uh, what you needs to happen is if you love the building, but you don't like the painting, you need to hang out with someone who likes the painting and doesn't like the building. And then together you can have, you can make wonderful music. Beyond hope. I hope I get my conquest saved at my local Forbidden Planet store. Got two repulses without realizing how much plastic there is. Oh, sorry. He says he gets his conquest saved. It's a full kit. That that repulsor kit that you get is it's a full box kit. You go in the store and buy it. It's a full box. Box, you're just being modest. You saw so very good at painting. Me, I'm far from your level. Says Paul to Master. Nah, I'm not. I'm I'm good at blagging things and making things. The thing I've always said is. Um, the hair. You. It's a head hair. Don't panic. Um, I'm not that great. You know, I'm I'm no expert. I don't I don't pretend to teach people how to paint like a pro. I'm not Darren Latham. I'm not you know any of these people. I'm, Darren Latham is astronomically beyond my ability and always will be. People like that, you know. I, I, um, but hell, I can't even remember the I can't even remember the damn color wheel. So. But the way I the way I see it is I'm still learning. But the one thing I've the one thing I've learned over the years I've been doing this is that there's a lot of techniques that that seem mysterious and complicated and dark. Like you look at a finished model and you think, how did you get that specific? That must take years of expertise to get that specific specific effect with lots of different products and knowledge. It's like no, it's a quick wash and then you dry brush. The one thing I've learned is there's a lot of techniques that can give amazing results but aren't actually that complicated. You know I. For example, go back to this. Let's go back to that. Not the best thing in the world ever, but it's, it's simple. But that is brushed on the sand, brushed on the blue, brushed on the green. Uh, it got a wash of nothing. I didn't get a wash of anything. It was brushed on the three basic colors. Because you, you look at that and think, wow, there's, there's some skill involved in that. I, I try to make people realize that you can get good results without having all that skill. Brushed on three basic colors, you're brushing on a flat color. It's not that hard. Then I basically br brushed um, Ammo by Mig Streaking Grime over it and then rubbed it off. After 10 minutes, rubbed it off with a cotton bud. There you go. Not anybody can do that. And then I airbrushed very carefully some Tamiya buff just around the base, more at the base, and then faded it out. Oh, that's about five hours work. It's not, I mean, it's no, it's no masterpiece, but just with some very, very simple techniques, you can get something that looks pretty sweet, especially table that look great on a tabletop. <laughs> my local, my Chris, my local store manager would love if that was on a tabletop amongst a load of like Bane blades and stuff. Counts as a Bane blade. But that's what I try and do. I try and show that, you know, while, while the, the way I do things may not give you a Darren Latham level, you know, we're not talking heavy metal style paint jobs here with glazes and blending. We're not talking box art, but the people who are just starting out, you can get a fantastic looking results just using the simplest of methods. And I try and I try and get the shadows out and shine a torch on the simplest of methods that that are that give the best. Results. I'm a lazy monkey fluffer. If I can find a quick shortcut way of doing something, oh by God, I will do that. I try and show you guys that. That's what I find out. I try and show you that when you're starting out. The worst thing you can do is look at somebody like Darren Latham or may if I may blow his trumpet in chat, Cy Reynolds in chat, if you see some of his work. <laughs> Golden Demon winner. What can I say? 
you know, I'm like, yeah, I can't be bothered doing all that. I'm just going to dry brush and a wash and shave, and there you go, bang, done. So, but I think the trip, the trap a lot of people fall into is they, they start off with no no knowledge. Um, they don't they don't know a few of the, they don't know all the secrets, but they don't know all the even basic secrets. They try and paint something, and it comes out looking like garbage, and they get discouraged. And they think, therefore, that everything they need... Uh, Michael Elliott, I'll take my leaf for now, folks. Off to make burger in a bowl for dinner before my evening nap on my first night shift of the week. Take care, Michael. Thanks for coming in. Enjoy your burger in a bowl. I like that. Enjoy your nap. Uh, yeah, so they'll, they'll, they'll have no, no knowledgings, no learnings. They'll go, brrr, paint, paint, paint. They'll, they'll think they know what to do. How hard can be putting paint on a model? And then they'll get dissatisfied with the results. And I can't do that. It's all dark arts. It's all complicated stuff. But it's not. Because yes, if you if you're an absolute beginner and you look at something that I don't know Darren Latham or Sai or somebody, if you look at the box art on a Warhammer kit, and you think those are, you've got to be a master to do all that, but you don't, because you can get halfway there by doing really simple techniques that don't require a lot of skill, don't require a lot of training, don't require a lot of knowledge, just a little bit of common sense and somebody to show you how to do it. And that's why I do. That's why I'm here. I'm not I'm not a master, I can't teach out here, man. That's what I'm doing. I just try and demystify the basic stuff. For people, my, my entire role is to get you past that first hurdle. Basically. My entire purpose in life is to get Steve painting his his, uh, his scratch built stuff with more than two colours. To a good level. That's my entire purpose in life, Steve. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> We'll get you off that brown and white look. We'll, we'll move you on from that. But yeah, that's... Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Beyond Hope. Took an open university course on cosmology. Page one. The universe is large. Thought, I can handle this. Page two. Quantum physics. Yeah, good on that one. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, I, I, watching... I, I keep quoting him because he's the only person I can think of off the top of my head, but... I, Watching someone like Darren Latham video and expecting to learn how to paint like him straight away with no experience is like is like being given a book on M theory, uh, you know, and being a, thinking to yourself, I'll have that wrapped up in a week. I'll understand M theory and string theory and no problem before you've even learned how to do basic maths. Not going to happen. And I try and show you the basic math. <laughs> Uh, Snowman says, I have to say, I like building. My painting is getting better than it was. Still not fun. Beyond Hope says, I enjoy making something out of nothing. I may not be brilliant at it, but the building is enjoyable. My painting is crap, so I try and avoid ruining what I've just made. That, it, that, that's the thing. It's just really practice and knowledge. And once you, once you shake this thinking in your mind that you have to have this insane expert level of knowledge and ability to do a good paint job and, and start to realize it is just kind of basic stuff but it's only basic because someone's showing you how to do it you know sticking a plaster on a wound is basic but didn't know about it you won't be able to walk into a surgery and do thoracic surgery for example that, that whole that whole example was rubbish i did just, let's just strike that from the record that one was terrible everything is complicated until you realize some of it isn't until somebody shows you how to do it that's what i try and do so don't don't be discouraged if you think if you're thinking to yourself my painting is crap I, I just like building stuff just do more painting do more you know spend time if you've just spent a long time custom building something then you what last thing you're going to want to do is ruin it with a paint job that you think you can't do so all it means is you know that your painting is something that maybe needs some work where you've got room to room to develop those skills because imagine building something and then giving it a good paint job would be even better so what i would say is before you because there's no incentive to try and paint something you've spent all that time building you don't want to ruin it in your eyes get yourself a little crappy kit little five pound airfix piece of crap that's not going to be used for anything else other than just like you know lighter fuel um build it just straight out of the box and then use that as a test pick i wouldn't say maybe a plane but a vehicle of some sort like a crappy vehicle tank kit just a cheap five ten pound tank kit you know tamiya kits tamiya kits the old tamiya armored vehicle and tank kits. they're great for that because they're a simple build they're not they're not like a complicated dragon or trumpet with a million photo etch go and get yourself an old tamiya panzer 4 or something like that they're not expensive 10 
10 quid, something like that. Simple builds, and you can have fun weathering because things like tanks are perfect because they're meant to look weathered and beaten and battered. So you've got all kinds of techniques. You can try brush painting, you can try airbrushing, you can try weathering and mud and splat and all kinds of stuff. But that way, you'll have a kit that you haven't invested all the time scratch building, which is the big stumbling block if you do scratch building. That's the big stumbling block. You've put all the effort into it. I don't want to ruin it. If you've just built some Tamiya tank that costs you a fiver out of a box, you've spent an, you know, a day doing it, like, you don't care if you mess it up. Um, and if it does go wrong, pop it in the Dettol, get the paint off. Yeah. Give it a try. Don't, don't, don't let the, the fact you've spent all that time building something be the hurdle that stops you learning how to paint. Because, you know, you, it may well be that you have a natural knack for painting and you take to it really quickly once you've, once you've got the mojo and you've shown how to do it. That you may have never developed otherwise so give it a try give it a try i bid that suggest to everybody just starting out get yourself a crappy kit you can practice on test pigs is what known as one of these things these are like what 10 quid <laughs> they're great fun you can brush paint them you can airbrush them you can do whatever you want and no effort they cost you literally a fiver they're, they're all pushed together all snap for it you'll build it in a, in a minute well, unless you're me you'll build it in four hours but you, know, you build it in an hour no problem at all do it do it do it do it do something that you've not got a big investment in basically you know if you want to learn how to let's say if you want if you if you if you paint cars for a living and you want to learn how to do the big long brush painted flames on a on a hot rod you're not going to start on a set of 150 grand hot dog hot rod hot dog hot rod hot dog Ooh, hot dogs you're not going to try out your paint. You're going to get an old bonnet from the scrapyard and test out your painting. I, I say that because this is what I've actually done. You know, if you if you want to do custom paintwork or cars, you don't try. You don't start on somebody's car. You start on a, a panel, on a scrap panel from the scrappies. You, you do it. Let's have a look. Um, I resemble that remark, says Cynical Steve, about him painting in two colours. But someone once told me that any more than three colours is chaos. But I do need to stop using a tan and orange and orange and white. Yes. Uh, any more than three colours? Blue, brown, green, gold, tan, flesh, red, black, silver, blue, other blue, red, white, yellows, lamenters yellow. Those headlights, my favourite glaze that no longer exists. R.I.P. Lamenters Yellow. Uh, there's, there's a yeah, yeah. More than three colours isn't chaos. It's more than three colours if they're all completely opposite and not connected any way. That's why I like this colour scheme because if I, I cam camouflage is really hard to make up out of your own mind. If you try and make up a camouflage scheme, it's going to traditionally be black and green, which is boring and looks terrible. If I tried to come up with a camouflage, I would never think, never think of mixing light blue sand green i would never think of that but when you when you do it and then you give it a, you know the the right kind of weathering it just really works it all comes together and it works nicely red white the red and white stripe there it just it just works so that's why i'm doing my death core death core of krieg in this color scheme because it's a really nice color scheme and stealing this color scheme for my own uses is a lot easier than me trying to come up with a color scheme that doesn't look absolute garbage Snowman says, I like the Death Guard because they're meant to look horrible, but it's my Space Marines I'm not looking forward to yet. But the thing is, the thing is, think of it logically. Think of it like Death Guard are supposed to look bad because they're covered in plague and pustules and boils and blessings of Nurgles. They're meant to look corroded and rotten. However, your Space Marines, Space Marines don't, don't look like they just walked out of a factory. Don't forget, some of those Space Marines could be hundreds of years old and their armour could be hundreds of years old. There are, there are, you know, chapter masters and and captains that have armor that's been handed down and could be thousands of years old. So, although Space Marine armor is kept in good condition, it doesn't mean it's going to be immune to weathering and damage and chipping. Look at any here's a, here's the thing. Look at any Games Workshop promotional artwork, and I know it's always going to be Ultramarine. So, eh. But I'm looking at a poster on my wall now, right now, behind me, and there's a Space Marine there firing his gun, <clears throat> and he's in. <clears throat> Excuse me, nice shiny ultramarine armor, unfortunately. But all around the pauldron on the gold trim, there's little chips and dings taken out of it. There's loads of chips and metallic chips taken on the armor. There's little bits of damage here and there. It's it's 
think of your Space Marine's armor as like a small tank, a person-sized tank. It's going to have paint chips. It's going to have scuffs and scratches and scrapes. If they've been on a planet for a month in a battle, it's going to have dirt, filth. And, you know, when they get back to their ship or back to base or wherever, their home world, and they get to sort their armor out, then, yeah, it'll look nice. But when they've been on a planet for six months fighting, you know, Z filthy Xeno scum, their armor's going to be battered. So doesn't mean it has to be clean. You can make your... It's not going to be rotten and, dis and rusted and horrible like Death Guard. But it's still going to show the wear and tear of everyday use. And, you know, look at any military hardware. It looks knackered after a week. So, yeah, you can still paint it dirty and knackered and chipped and battered. It just shows that your guys have been in a lot of combat. Relux Illusions. I panicked, I panicked and bought Lamentus Yellow a few years ago. I still have nine pots. It's such a versatile colour. I bought one pot. I really wish I'd bought more than one pot because when I run out of Lamentis Yellow, that's it. I'm screwed. And I love it. I love it to death. Absolutely adore Lamentis Yellow. Have, on, on that note, on that note, get this for you. Talking of fear of missing out. I'm going the dust off it. I found one of these for, uh, for sale for a tenner. I found that for a tenner and I had to buy it because I saw it being used and I had to buy it. And it's long out of, they don't make it anymore. It's long out of production. Uh, and I found this. It's the Citadel tint set. And because they're out of production, they can sell for like 50, 60, 70, 100 quid, which is ridiculous because they're just, it's just a set of tints basically. And I thought, I need to buy it right now. I need to buy it now. I have to buy it so I can make my tints and do tinting and I got it, and I got my little stickies, and I got all of that, and I haven't used it once, but I've got it. So I technically could make my own Lamentas yellow if I really wanted to, using, uh, I can't even get it out, that. Because basically these are, um, effectively these are the pigments, the base pigments they use in all their paints. Um, that, that are just massively, massively, massively concentrated. So you would, for example, uh, if you add, I think the example Duncan gave was he got one of these. If you add like one little, like five or six little tiny scoops of this blue, which is Conrad Kurtz, five or six little scoops of that, and what using one of these like that, into a pot of say lead belcher, it will make a, a steely blue color. Things like that. The white. They're massively, basically, intensely massive, dense pigments. And you add a tiny amount to a paint to change its tint and that's the idea technically you can a, make any color you want using a paint and one of these and because i knew they were out of production and i thought oh, i could see a real use for that and then i never used it so but i wish i had done that with uh lamentas yellow because lamentas yellow is a fantastic color i can't get this back in the box now back in your box the mentor's yellow is brilliant for um doing like search lights and headlights really quickly doing headlights and search lights real simple way there we go that's done now so i've got that <laughs> never used it i'm glad i've got it because it's there if i need it but uh wow fox will have it off your rolux says dad uh i did i was actually about i had to stop myself saying to rolux illusion i will buy half of those because i haven't got any money i can't afford to buy half of them yes if i had the money i will be contacting rolux illusion right now to say please send me half of those um i do have metallics in all sorts for details and my quad jumper was tan and blue Ooh. beyond hope said i've made my own yellow glaze from vallejo ink and ink uh, and water one part of yellow ink to three parts of water. Uh, yes, you can make your own. You can make your own glazes. Um, you can, like you say, inks are really good. The, the whole trick of making a glaze, if you want to replace like your Lamentus yellow or your other ones, uh, is you want a dense pigment. Uh, you don't want to use normal paints. You can make a sort of glaze. Uh, now, keep in mind when we're talking about glaze, is this is where it gets confused. We don't mean glaze like when you're glazing a miniature, and you get some. You get the touch a paint and a bit of water and you make a really thin glaze to make a blend same word different thing a glaze is more like a, a transparent paint you can use to do that but the idea of a glaze is you paint something white you do a yellow glaze and you 
very slight yellow tinge to it. You paint something red. If I paint something with a dull red and I wash over, if I brush over it a, a bright yellow glaze, it pushes it more towards the orange a little tiny bit and it makes it more bright and bold. It really makes the color pop. Two different uses of the word glaze. So it's glaze in this case is more like tint. So a glaze, you want it to be very transparent, but very intense color, very strong to affect what's underneath. And you can, you can get an ink because inks, inks are massively more dense pigmented than, um, than paints. So when I was saying earlier on, where is it gone? when I was saying before, remember what I was saying about the Borderlands paint scheme, I said, whatever you do, if you want to do a Borderlands paint scheme, be outlining, use an ink, not a paint. Don't use an Abaddon black or a black water acrylic paint for your inking. Use an ink. The reason I used ink for my Borderlands paint scheme was this stuff is like massively dense pigment. It's not trans, it's, it's far less transparent than equivalent black paint like a line of this and a line of say abaddon black or any black acrylic paint that acrylic paint watered down to the same thinness because you want it to be thin get the flow for the lines you water down normal acrylic paints the same thinness they'll be super transparent more like a glaze than this which is super transparent i mean which is super thin not transparent that's the trick I want it to be inks for inks are massively dense so uh, inks are great for using for making washes and pigments, but yes, for glazes as well. If I was making a glaze, like if I wanted to make Lamentus yellow, I would, like you suggest there, I'd use it. Uh, I'd use a yellow ink. I'm sorry, yellow, yeah, yellow ink. But I wouldn't use water to thin it. I would make the glaze with something like Lamian medium or Vallejo glaze medium, or one of the other countless glaze mediums that are out there. Glaze mediums are basically a paint with no pigment in. And what you do is you add in a tiny amount of, say, the yellow ink. Uh, and you just tiniest amount and suddenly you've got a yellow glaze it behaves like the paint when you apply it it behaves just like a paint but it's got whatever tint you've added to it with the, with the ink and that's what those tints are for you add them to things like mediums that have a tint or you add them to all the colors right, way off on a tangent there uh where are we up to i'll quickly quickly wrap up in a moment box what if the thing you're building is meant to be one color industrial yellow for example where do you go with that so Steve. Uh, well, you'll see what I do with that when we do the Millennium Falcon, because the Millennium Falcon is one colour. It's basically that off-white. Um, so if things meant, things can be one colour. That's not a problem at all. A lot of sci-fi vehicles are just various shades of grey. Fine, it's not a problem. What you do there is it's about the weathering you put on. If you make a nice shiny spaceship that's not got any dirt or dust on it and it's one colour, it'll look really boring. Uh, that's where the whole used universe look comes in why things like aliens and stuff were kind of rem the, the, you know the star wars and aliens and things like that and, and 2001 to a certain degree started to give that more convincing used universe because things are all they're all like similar colors like millennium falcon it's all technically it's uh colloquial reefer grime the color reefer grime or reefer gray i can't remember technically in reality the the correct color for the millennium falcon is Locals reefer grime called um i think with a bit of something else mixed in but oh uh goodbye says stephen word it's a fun time see you next week uh chat and mods bye thanks for coming in stephen see you again next week take care buddy uh yeah it's so but you can't get a local over here in the uk and it's horrible paint it's all lack as any so what I will tend to do is I've got a mixture of uh, Tamiya flat white and deck tan. You'll you'll see when I make it, but it's all the same colour, apart from the little coloured panels which are decals. The Millennium Falcon is basically all one colour. It's all about the weathering. The weathering then makes it all pop and gives it character. So there's no harm in painting something like you know I was joking about you painting things two colours. There's nothing wrong with that. Some things are just two colours. Uh, but it's what you do on top of that make it look good. Like when I did my little Star Wars land speeder, it was yellow with a white stripe, and that was it. The bodywork was yellow, and there's a white stripe. But I put weathering in there to make the color under the chipping where you've, you've got a paint chip and there's a gray underneath. Or perhaps before it was yellow, it was red, so there's a little bit of red. You can add to it. So even if something's just one color, there'll be more colors as well. But you can still make it. It's the weathering that does it. Weathering. Uh, I'll send you one, says Rolux. No, don't be daft. They're worth a fortune. I don't be sending me nonsense. Uh, that costs a fortune. Uh, no, do not change red to orange, says Dad. Yes. Edward Leonard says, Edward Leonard says, I use water and a smidge of acrylic matte medium to thin the ink. Yep. 
Uh, that's the thing is well you're not technically you're not thinning it you're diluting it well if you well here we go if you add water to it you're thinning it uh if you add acrylic matte medium or any kind of glaze medium like that you're you're diluting it the difference is if you dilute an ink with a medium so matte medium glaze medium anything like that gloss medium you're you're diluting out the pigment so let's say you've got uh you've got You've got a small container that contains this much glitter. let's say that's that's 50 milliliters and i put one drop of ink in there that's one drop of ink per 50 milliliters of glaze medium that's how dilute it is if i then fill this with glaze medium and put one drop of ink in there it's going to be a liter one drop of ink per liter dilution so same amount of ink vastly more uh, matte medium or glaze medium this is massively more dilute the only difference is they will they will both behave exactly the same way except this one will be more transparent than this one so when you change the trans when you change the dilution uh, by adding a medium which is basically an acrylic paint with no color in it no pigment you're just changing the transparency this is the important thing if you add water or thinners you're changing you're not diluting you're thinning it the difference there is you're not necessarily making it more transparent although you are you're also physically altering the way that that uh, paint behaves because whatever you use to thin it even if it's water or thinners or anything like that you're breaking down the acrylic chemical binders that make that paint behave the way it does so if you have a paint that say has a particular way that it self levels like uh, let's say pledge the pledge gloss varnish it's an acrylic basically that has a beautiful ability to self-level really smooth and that's how it's designed to the chemicals in it are designed to lay out like that and the, the atomic structure if you thin that with thinners or water it would just destroy it it wouldn't behave the same way i know it's not a paint but it's the same principle if you take a paint that might have a certain transparency and a certain certain way that it dries it it might be a really thin smooth paint that goes on beautifully uh, like for example the ultimate primers they're let's not use that but forget that yeah it, it basically changes it breaks down the acrylic binders it changes the way it works think of think of it this way diluting is like adding red wine to white wine you get a rosé but it's still wine and you'll still get wobbly and you'll fall over and have a massive massive hangover the next day so diluting with glaze mediums and inks or any uh, paint and glaze medium diluting with a glaze medium is adding red wine to white wine to make the wine more transparent it makes it it's a rosé wine it makes it more transparent it's not quite as bold a red there you go the white wine is the medium if you add red wine with a liter of water you just dilute you're just thinning it and it's not going to have any wobbly falling over effect you're making it really weak it's going to lose all its alcoholic content you're foul you're going to hate it it's not going to get you drunk so the red wine and white wine combined which is ink or paint and a glaze medium or a, a, a acrylic medium still behaves the same way it just looks different if you thin it with water or thinners it looks different but it won't behave the same way and what that really means is when you do a paint if you do a wash with a with a uh, a paint uh, and say water and thinned it but little things it's fine but when you want a specific say if you're making a wash if i've got a big model and i want to give it a wash of say a dark color like a black if i get if i get uh, black ink or black paint in an acrylic medium and wash it all over it'll make it'll be like null oil we'll collect in the recesses but it'll also tint the surface a little bit it'll have a certain way of behaving if i thin that black paint or ink with water and slop it all over or thinners it will have a different surface tension and you'll get watermarks and tide marks and blobs and nasty things it'll behave totally differently i did put a, i'll put it in the boom hot again but i did show a little make a little picture showing the difference between thinning and diluting with some agrax so I'll, I'll put that in the boom hut again later well that's the difference think of it that way red wine and white wine it's still wine you'll still fall over it just looks different red wine and water no but there you go that's thinning and diluting anyway edward and said edward and said yes dilute just use the used to using the wrong terminology everybody makes that mistake and not everybody realizes that it's the kind of thing that it sounds weird to explain it but most people don't know that 
So it's it's always worth me explaining it because a lot of people just think, oh, you just add some water to it. There you go. Because we're so used to making glazes on our wet palette, which is fine. And using water to thin the paint when you're brush painting, that makes perfect sense because you're only adding a little bit of water. When you're making, say, washes and stuff and tints. Anyway, right. Uh, I think we're done. Uh, uh, where are we? That's up to date. Yes, Edward says dilute, just used to using the wrong term. Like, yes, yes. No. Adding a little tiny bit of water and acrylic medium as well. It's, it's fine. It depends what you're using it for. If you're making specific, if you want to make your own shades or glazes, it's a bit thin your paint. Anyway, I think that's going to do us. I'll have a swig of coffee. I need a great big wee. I'm going to make me dinner. Uh, um, that's going to do us. Thank you to everybody for watching. Don't forget, of course, Although I'm going now, uh, Chris will be here with his Warhamster Sunday 8 p.m. GMT on his channel. If you're still watching, Chris, make sure to pop a, pop your name in or whatever. Uh, he does his Warhamster. He's still working on his um, Orc Bombers from the Aeronautica Imperialis. Uh, so I think now I'm going to obviously be back tomorrow for Monday for the eModels Monday live stream. Me, Colin, Chris and Ted back. So do make sure to come watch that on the channel like i say this week my priority now this week is getting these silver templars done if it works if my plan works i've got i'm, I'm going to build a test marine i'm going to test my, my painting scheme out on him if it works brilliant i'll film the rest of them in that method if not i'll be painting these in the normal traditional way anyway so i'll, I'll get the silver templars filmed this week and then hopefully next week all being well next week in falcon time yes i need to get that millennia falcon done uh so, yes, I'll be back tomorrow with the eModel stream. Don't forget, on Tuesday, I'll be doing another of my uh, books of, of the Elder Scrolls. My little sort of two or three minute long readings in which I'm reading all the books in Skyrim and all the books in Daggerfall and all the books in Morrowind. All the, all of them. It's going to take me years. I've got two so far. So, uh, tomorrow will be, I'm doing all the books in Skyrim first. So I'll be doing another one of those on Tuesday. So, that'll just pop up on Tuesday at some point. Watch that. Uh, and then next Saturday, of course, is Skyrim Saturday. Hopefully, should be back with some more Skyrim fun. And then next Sunday, of course, we're back here. At... And who knows what else will happen during the week? We shall see. Anyway, I shall leave it with there. So, guys, obviously, I've, I have to massively thank you all for being really well behaved and not discussing that which will not be discussed on the stream for my monetization. So, thank you massively for that, for adhering to that. Uh, massive respect for being so nice. On that note, do take care uh without being too specific you know avoid the blessings of nurgle uh do take care do what you're told hands kind of stuff take care of yourselves uh in the meantime i shall say thank you very much for watching let me just double check my buttons still work Slap it on. yes there we go buttons still work thank you very much for watching i shall see you later on for chris's stream and until then i shall say take care of yourselves go make something awesome like these go be awesome until next time i shall say Adios, amoebas. <laughs>